Well, it's a Saturday night in Winston-Salem and the Carolina Thunderbirds coming off their fifth straight victory a night ago over the Port Huron Prowlers. A 4-1 to victory here at the Annex on a Friday night and now here on Saturday. It's game two of a three-game set between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers with Carolina trying to take the series here this evening. Welcome inside the Annex at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB here this evening. Pleasure to have you along for the ride from wherever you may be joining us here tonight. And then we should be set for what should be another good one. Last night, as I said, a 4-1 to victory for Carolina over Port Huron. They got the scoring star to a Nate Keeley's first FPHL goal coming at the 8.30 mark. And you'll hear from the head coach, Steve Harrison, in just a little bit. But after that goal, Port Huron, they really started to find their footing. And Steve Harrison, he had those same sentiments as the uh, for the final 10 minutes of that first period. But in that, uh, the Carolina, they went to the intermission leading one to nothing. And they were able to get a quick, quick strike from Gus Ford, who was able to find his way in on a beautiful find from Dawson Baker and Dominic Dumas. As that was at the 19 second mark of the second period, Carolina took a two to nothing lead. And they were able to hold that heading into the third. But in that second period, that assist for Dawson Baker ended up being his 100th career point in his FBHL career and as a member of the Carolina Thunderbirds. So a big congratulations to Dawson Baker for reaching the century mark here in his career. Dominic Dumas also, also got an assist on that one as well. But towards the end of the second period, coming at the 16-17 mark, Joe Kennedy was called for a game misconduct for boarding. Well, the safeties and the safety fine suspensions came out today from the FPHL. Kennedy was not suspended, so Joe Kennedy is in the lineup here this evening. So Carolina will have all six defensemen here tonight. But after that, Carolina had to kill off a five-minute power play, and they're able to for the first three and a half minutes. And they're able, but they still went five on four as they went to the third. And in that third period, 38 seconds in, Brandon Picard, the points leader for Port Huron, was able to beat Mario Cavalieri, and that made it a two-to-one game. And that's how it stayed all the way until the final three minutes of the contest. At the 17.33 mark though, Carolina, they were able to find their footing. And it was the check line primarily. Tucker Firth got over to Peter Panacic, and then Yuri Pastuka, he got lost in the slot and was able to send one home. That made it three to one. After that, Port Huron would have to pull the goalie, and Dawson Baker was able to score from the defensive half of the ice for his second point on the evening as Carolina was able to take a four to one victory over the Port Huron Prowlers in game one uh, of this weekend. So Carolina now, they sit at 24 points, a 9-2-0 record here to start off the season, but they still trail the Columbus River Dragons, who ended up picking up a win in Whitfield last night, but they trail by two points. Columbus with 26 here to start off this year. But Carolina now, they got two points from Gus Ford, two points from Dawson Baker last night. A couple other guys were able to come away with points as well. You saw that check line account for two points with Panacic's assist, Pastuka's goal. Also three defensemen were on the score sheet with Felder, Firth and Bioni all picking up assists last night. But Carolina now are trying to pick up their sixth straight win, trying to pick up their fifth straight year against the Port here on Prowlers, dating back to the regular season of last year. And it should be another good matchup here this evening on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. It's game two of a three-game set between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port here on Prowlers. And we're closing in on puck drop coming up just past 6 o'clock this evening. We'll be back with more up next. You'll hear from the head coach Steve Harrison, hear his thoughts after last night, and we'll be able to start to break that down on the other side as well. There's more to come here on Thunderbirds pregame. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. 
He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. We're back here on Thunderbirds pregame, getting you set for game two between Carolina and Port Huron. Brendan Riley being joined by the head coach, Steve Harrison. After last night, a 4-1 to one victory, uh, two late goals to uh, close it close it out and take the three points. Um, but last night, there was a lot going on in that game. Physicality started to ramp up, and and, and uh, game went back and forth. But uh, for, for you, for seeing it from the bench, what did you see last night? Well, yeah, at, at times, we played very well. The first 10 minutes of the game, I, I thought we carried it to them and, and, and played our game. And then uh, we, we started making some mistakes and, and, and we let them get back in the game so I give them a lot of credit they came in here and uh, were looking for points and, and they played pretty well and uh, we just played up and down all night uh, I think at times we played very well and other times I don't think we played as well as we can play And uh, but we found a way to win and, and, and that's all that really matters at the end of the day and uh, but we got to learn from how we played last night and then hopefully we, tonight we can come out and uh, put an effort on for 60 minutes. They say that you guys went up and down was that more a factor of you guys playing you know playing up and down or is that something that Port Huron was doing, making it tough for you guys? Well, I think a little bit of them, but I, I think a lot of us is, is, is that we just, uh, I, I think we got up that one nothing, and, and I think, well, geez, you know, we kind of rolled. And, and the first 10 minutes, I, I thought we kind of dominated. And uh, you look at the shots after 10 minutes, we were up by big. And uh, I, I think I just think we, we, we thought, okay, this is going to be, and after last weekend, uh, having a great weekend against Columbus, that uh, this was just going to roll. And, and uh, it doesn't. It, it, it's something that we have to regroup with every day. And uh, as I said, last night was just kind of an up and down night. Now, it looked like over those final 10 minutes of that first period, Port Huron started to grow into the game a little bit. Uh, you go into the first intermission, one goal lead, and Gus is able to get a quick one, 19 seconds. And how big was that goal to set up the rest of the game? Well, it was great. I mean, we, we took charge and, and uh, let them get and uh, really took it over again, you know. And so I give them a lot of credit. They came out storming. And uh, again, and then unfortunately, you know, we get a penalty at the end of the, at the, end of the second period and did a great job for uh, almost all whole five minutes. So uh, we let them back, get back in the game. But uh, as I said, we found a way to win. It wasn't very pretty in my mind, uh, as I said, but uh, uh, a good game uh, for the fans. Uh, I think it was, as you say, some little physicality, a little bit of uh, this and that, but uh, uh, overall, it was it was not a bad game. As I said, we came out and won, and so that's the main thing. Now, going into game two here tonight, uh, the middle game now of this series, you can take the series here uh, on the weekend. Uh, how big would these three points be in uh, being able to secure this series for going into the final tomorrow? Well, yeah, you know, we, we just want to take care of today, and, and we'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, and uh, uh, well, we got to come out and play a full 60 minutes and play the way we can, and uh, we'll be in good shape. Uh, they're they're going to come tonight. Uh, they played on the road now, I think, uh, three weekends in a row, and so they know how to play on the road. And uh, they played well last night, so they're they're going to be loosey goosey. They've had a day to to acclimate themselves to here, so they're going to come out hard tonight. So we're going to have to match their intensity and, and and play to our game. Well, coach, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck to you here tonight. Thanks very much. As head coach Steve Harrison, we got more in Winston Salem coming up. Game two between Carolina and Port here on just a little bit. We're back after this. This is we're talking. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile.
My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day, and go Birds. We are getting right, ready whack, whack. for another good one between the uh, Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers. Game two of a three-game series here coming up in just a little bit past the top of the hour. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Thank you for joining me here during Thunderbirds pregame. And you just heard from the head coach, Steve Harrison, who said he there was more to be desired from his team here in this one. And... And, and it will be an interesting to see how the Thunderbirds are able to respond to that here this evening. They did come away with the 4-1 victory last night, but now it, he still wants to see more from them. That's kind of been how it has been throughout this whole season. This team has played well, but now how can they continue to just build and build and be able to continue to improve here as Carolina is about to embark as we start to move into the middle part of the season. Carolina right now sitting at 9-2-0 on the season. 24 points, only two points behind Columbus in the Continental Division. On the other side, Port Huron coming into this evening 5-5-1 five, five, and one on the year with 15 points. They find themselves in fourth in the Continental Division in which that's where they finished last year in the Continental Division. Of course, though, you add in Whitville and Baton Rouge this year as well. So Right now, Carolina, they're in a good spot after their first 11 games this season. And a big factor of that has really been that first line. And you look at Gus Ford as well as Dawson Baker. And then when Roman Kramer, when he was here, the team has been able to find a lot of success through those two. Ford coming into this evening, team leading 19 points on the year. He's got 12 goals to go along with seven assists. Those 12 goals find himself in the top three of the FBHL. On the other side, Dawson Baker, he's gotten off to a strong start, 11 points through 11 games. So those two have been able to set the tone as well as Roman Kramer. Dominic Dumas has also come in, who a rookie here in the FBHL. He's been able to find himself in the on the first line with the absence of Kramer. And he's also been able to be successful here this year. He's already got seven points across his first 10 games. Remember, he was a scratch for that first game against Blue Ridge back in the third game of the season but he's been able to come in and join that first line then you look at the second line for Carolina and this check line they've been together for so long they've been in Carolina for quite a while as well and they've been able with especially the absence of Yuri Pastuk over those first uh, over about five games Carolina has been able since they've gotten Pastuk back that check line continues to excel and it really starts with the centerman it's Peter Panachik he's got 13 assists here over his first 10 games remember he got a game suspension after he's being called an aggressor in one of those games against Blue Ridge a few weeks back but he's got 13 point, rather 16 points here this season. He's only trailing Gus Ford by three. Three goals and 13 assists for Peter Panacek, who comes into tonight with 79 goals in his in his career in the FPHL, as well as 149 assists. So Peter Panacek is trying to get to the 150 mark with the assists as he was able to pick one up last night, and that was on the goal to Yuri Pastuka. That made it three to one with seven at the 17:33 mark of that third period. You look at the defense, the defense has been very strong this year. Carolina coming in with a plus 17 goal differential, and it's been a big factor of the defense and also the netminder as well, Mario Cavalieri. If you were, were with us on Tuesday night when we were at King's Crab Shack, had a great conversation with Cavalieri uh, and about his whole process, how he goes about things and how he gets ready. He says that communication's key, and this defense has looked like a really tight-knit group here throughout this season. And Cavalieri has been sensational between the pipes as well as he comes in to today with a goals against average of sub two. He's got a 1.97. His save percentage is at a 9.34, and he's nine and two to start off the year. The FPHL they announced their uh, awards here today. They announced the rookie of the month. They announced the goaltender of the month, and they announced the player of the month. I was shocked to see when I checked the wire that Mario Cavalieri was not made not named 
the goaltender of the month after he's gone off to an absolutely sensational start here this year. But Carolina, their defense has been a well-oiled machine. The attack has been looking good as well. You saw that third line last night. You saw John Batista, he was able to pick up an assist. Nate Keeley picked up his first goal as well. So the Thunderbirds, even after last night when the head coach Steve Harrison said he didn't think they played their best, and he gave credit to Port Huron as well, but he's, he's expecting more here tonight, and we should be able to see what's going to go down here this evening. Well, we got more to come here on Thunderbirds pregame. Game two between Port Huron and Carolina coming up in just a little bit. We're back after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Back here in Winston-Salem, we're getting ready for game two of three between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers. Just about over 12 minutes away from the scheduled puck drop time here for game two this evening. Taking a look at the Port Huron Prowlers this evening. They came away, they ended up losing 4-1 to last night. Coming into this evening, they have a minus two goal differential while averaging 3.6 goals per game. They're being led by Brendan Picard, who was the lone goal scorer last night for the Port Huron Prowlers. He was the only one to beat Mario Cavalieri. He's got seven goals and seven assists here this year. Matt Graham has 12 points on the air, second highest on the team. And Graham, the player coach, now in his third season with a 51-61-9 record here this year, or in his career as the head coach of the Port Huron Prowlers. Against Carolina in his career, he's 8-9-5 against the Carolina Thunderbirds in his career. It looks like that they are going to be going with a change in net here this evening. As it looks like, it's going to be Tucker Tynan, the netminder here tonight for the Port Huron Prowlers. Last night, you saw Makar Sokolov. He was the netminder last night for the Prowlers. But Tucker Tynan comes into today. This will be his fourth game. He's 1-2 on the season with a 2.70 goals against average and a 9.17 save percentage. He last played on November 24th against Mississippi, where he ended up saving 23 of 27 shots. But ended up picking up the loss as... You know, picking up the loss as Port Huron ended up dropping that game. Two third period goals were the difference in that one as Port Huron dropped the last time that Tucker Tynan was between the pipes. And now it sets up another one here this evening. Lights have gone down here at the Enix. That must mean the Thunderbirds are getting ready to come out here in just a little bit. Game two, 4 1 win last night for Carolina. Game two, trying to take the series here tonight. Coming up in just a little bit. We're back to Winston Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. 
We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Back here in Winston-Salem, we're getting ready for game two of three here tonight between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers. Port Huron on their side, no injuries right now to update you on from last night, but one questionable for the Thunderbirds here tonight. And that is Yuri Pastuka. Of course, he missed five games earlier this year, but his head coach Steve Harrison told me earlier today that he was questionable coming into tonight. He was out for warm-ups, and he was giving it a go there, but we are still waiting to see if Yuri Pastuka will be playing here this evening after he picked up a goal last night. And this year now only in six games here this season. He's got four points, three goals, and assists for the Czech native. So Yuri Pastuka, the only one right now that's questionable for the Thunderbirds, we should be able to have confirmation here in just a little bit to see if Bastuka will finish off that check line tonight. Thunderbirds going with nine forwards, six defensemen, two netminders here this evening as they continue this run of 18. Dominic Dumas, Gus Ford, and Dawson Baker make up the first line with Jan Salak, Peter Panacek, and Yuri Pastuka. The second line, the check line, John Petita, Nate Keeley, and Jacob Schnapp are the third line for the head coach Steve Harrison this evening. The defensemen. Here tonight, Joe Kennedy, Clay Keeley are the first line. Gregory Felder and Tucker Firth make up the second line. Both of them coming away with assists last night. And then James Farmer and Justin Bioni are the third pair of defensemen with Mario Cavalieri and Nett and Frankie McClendon is back. It'll be interesting to see tomorrow if we see McClendon. I'm not sure. I'll have to see if Cavalieri will want to try to play three games in a row, but you don't see that very often, really ever. So we might get our debut back in Winston-Salem for Frankie McClendon between the pipes tomorrow. We'll have more information. We'll know come airtime tomorrow. Curtis Aggie, he's still out here for the foreseeable future. Still no timetable on him as he continues to recover after he got sent into the boards a few weeks back and hurt his shoulder. So Curtis Hagee right now is the only one not active here this evening at the moment for the Carolina Thunderbirds here tonight. Hopefully Yuri Pastuka is all right and we'll be able to have him out on the ice here this evening to finish off that check line. Thunderbirds, they're getting ready to make their way out. And we're closing in on puck drop here in Winston-Salem. Game two between the Port Huron Prowlers and the Carolina Thunderbirds. More to come from Winston-Salem in just a little bit. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Hi, I'm Stuart with Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. 
Be sure to find us on draft during cans of the games or come down and see us for here in downtown Winston Salem. Go birds. Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. Winston Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336 782 3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more. Back with you here on Thunderbirds TV. Thunderbirds have made their way out of their dressing room, getting ready to come out of the tunnel just to the left of us here at the Annex here in Winston-Salem. Tonight, the 56th ever matchup between the two sides. Carolina, they lead the all-time series after the win last night, 36-16-3. to to Here at home, Carolina is 18-7-2. Here at home, being able to pick up now four straight wins over the Port here on Prowlers. First meeting all time was back on December 1st, 2017. Again, it was Port here on winning at home 10 to 3. Carolina is led by Steve Harrison here in his seventh season in the FPHL. 176, 121, and 16 record. For the Toronto area native, 9-2 here in his first season in Carolina. The head coach for the Port Huron Prowlers, the player head coach, is Matt Graham. A 51-61-9 record here in his third season with the Port Huron Prowlers. He has that same record in his career. Against the Carolina Thunderbirds, he's 8-9-5 in his career. Port Huron comes to today at 5-5-1. Carolina is 9-2-0, sitting in second place in the Continental Division. Puck drop is coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. 
Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Make Rita call. Mario Cavalier making his way out of the tunnel. Last one onto the ice for the Carolina Thunderbirds here this evening as we're just about set for a puck drop for game two of a three-game series this weekend between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers. Last night, a 4-1 to victory for the Carolina Thunderbirds here at home. They took a 2-0 lead into the third period, but after that, Port Huron were able to cut the lead in half at the 38-second mark. And it stayed there all the way until two and a half minutes remaining in period number three when Yuri Pastuka was able to find one at pass Makara Sokolov that made it three to one. And then Dawson Baker getting a second point of the night was able to make it a 4-1 game on the empty netter. And Carolina took all three points for the first time in a couple weekends. Welcome inside the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB getting ready to bring you what should be another fun one between these two sides here tonight. A good crowd on hand on a rainy, foggy Saturday in Winston-Salem and it's been cold here all week and the rain has been coming in and out throughout the week, but the fans have made their way inside here to the Annex. We'll turn it down to our PA address announcer, Jose Bahena. Thank you. Make sure you visit GreatRoadTechnologies.com for all your automated, automated energy and motor control services. <laughs> Under our chains, please help us recognize our special guest for tonight, Chief Ward Officer 2, Josh Wilson. <laughs> National Anthem here at the Annex as we are ready for game two between Carolina and Port Huron. The starting netminders here this evening, starting with the visitors for the Port Huron Prowlers. It is Tucker Tynan making his fourth appearance this season. A 1-2 and two record with a 2.70 goals against average and a 9.17 save percentage. First start since November 24th. It was a loss against the Mississippi Seawolves where he allowed two third period goals 
that ended up being the difference. On the other side, for the Carolina Thunderbirds this evening, it is Mario Cavalieri, who has been sensational to start off 2023-2024. A 1.97 goals against average, a 9-2 record. Last night, he saved 25 out of 26 shots that he saw, and is now going to try to do more of the same here this evening. Carolina in their blackout jerseys for the second time here this season. They ended up picking up the overtime win last Saturday night against Columbus. Gus Ford's 100th goal ended up being the difference maker. Gus Ford will be in for the draw. Against Evan Foley, and Ford wins the draw, and we're underway here from Winston-Salem. Game two of a three-game set. Settle in for a good one here between the Port Huron Prowlers and the Carolina Thunderbirds for game number two. And we'll start in the defensive zone for Port Huron. It's played over to the far half boards and brought back out to center ice. A little too much on the pass, trying to get it to Matt Graham. No icing as Cavalieri plays it behind the net, rattles it around the boards. Graham's able to intercept, but he sends it right to Dawson Baker at two points last night, who finds Dominic Dumas. Dances around a defender, walks all the way into the corner as the Thunderbirds go off for a change. He goes two on five as he has Dawson Baker with him. Baker cycles it back into the corner as he gets held up. Dominic Dumas is with Frank Schumacher and is played on the far side. Here comes Port Huron trying to get their first rush. It'll be Evan Foley just dumping this one in. Cavalieri collects behind his own net. Plays it quickly over to Gregory Felder who bangs it off the boards and it comes back out to the neutral zone. And it's played by Brian Parsons, the Shrewsbury, Massachusetts native. He sends this one all the way back down. Cavalieri for the third time getting an early touch here tonight. A minute in here in game two. A spin and it's almost a takeaway as the puck bounces around a few skates. Scandalberry can't hang on to it. And it's played far side to Jan Salak. You see there Yuri Pastuk on the near side. He is in action here tonight after being questionable coming into today. Banachik ends up smacking one right over to Matthias Telstrom and sends it wide. This one goes off the board. Salak goes down. Puck bounces free. Back out towards the point. Pastuk holds in front of his own net and drops it off for Peter Panacek, working on 149 assists in his career. On the backhand, he spins back, leaves it for Pastuka, who cycles it into the corner. Cross ice pass, Joe Kennedy walks in a slap shot and that one doesn't get all the way through. It comes all the way back out to the neutral zone as Kennedy was able to walk in and, a, and a, let one fly there. Quickly the other way, Panacek, he just kicks this one to Jan Salak. He's on side, walks in, down towards the goal line, spins back out, finds Panacek. Panacek holds near corner before leaving it for Dawson Baker. Baker will just backhand this one right back to Panacek. Winds up getting a stick lifted and able to cycle it back down. Jan Salak holding on the backhand all the way out to the far side, cuts back and now leaves it for Dawson Baker. Baker cycles it back. Salak, good zone time here for the Thunderbirds here early on. Just two minutes in. Kennedy at the blue line sends one intentionally. Wine comes back out off the end boards to the near side and is played on a backhand by Brandon Picard, the lone goal scorer last night for the Port Huron Prowlers. Puck bounces around. It's kicked all the way back out as Joe Kennedy goes back to chase. He'll pick it up and hold behind his own net and play it off, stretch pass off the boards, back out to the neutral zone. He was trying to get it to Dumas. This one's going to go down. Tynan, he wasn't sure if it was going to be Ison, came out of his crease for a split second, and it's played by Gaeta. He leaves it for Matt Graham, the player coach. He leaves it right back for Gaeta. Walks into the high slot on the backhand, walks in a backhand, saved by Cavalieri, and he smothers the rebound with 17-21 remaining here in the first period. So Carolina's being able to spend a lot of time in the attacking zone here over the first two and a half minutes plus. But haven't been able to get a good attempt quite yet. And now a face-off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. It'll be Matt Graham and Nate Keeley in for the draw. Keeley last night getting his first FPHL goal, his third professional goal. Matita jumps in quickly from the far side. It's now a face-off is one back to the point. And Braden Deck will cycle this one back to the far corner where James Farmer will get his first touch of the evening. Gets tangled up in the corner by two white sweaters. Bangs it around and Jacob Schnapp plays it off a stick. Petita is able to knock it down from the air and he'll play this one off the glass. Able to dance around Deck as now it goes off the official and hangs up at the half boards. Quickly taken by Jay as he just throws this back out. Farmer back to retreat. He bangs this one back to Petita who is right at the red line. Petita, stick lifted from behind. Graham now has it. Plays it far side to Gaeta. Who's able to walk into the zone before he gets ran off by James Former. Schnapp is able to come away at the interception. Dances around a defender. And now will just dump this one in right on Tynan, who plays it on the backhand. And he'll have to freeze with 16.41 remaining here in the first period. Last night, Carolina, they had a 1-0 lead after the first 20 minutes. It was the goal from Nate Keeley in this third line. That was able to give Carolina the advantage. They would not trail after that as they went wire to wire. Steve Harrison trying to see a more complete game from his squad here tonight. And he'll bring out the check line for this face-off to the left of Tynan. 
It's won by Port Huron as Merritt's able to win it from Panachik, and it's held behind the net by Dalton Young. Young with three points this season. He holds, ends it up the far side, off the stick, a little too much on it. So he was trying to get it to Tucker Scannelberry as this one's deflected up and out of play. So they're going to say the puck drop is going to be right at center ice. Here with 16.30 remaining in the first period. This is the second of three this weekend. One more tomorrow at 4.05 p.m. here at the Annex. Merritt and Panacek in for the draw. Peter Panacek, he gets tossed. Has some words for the referee. He is now Salak's in for the draw. Tied up. He throws Merritt to the ground before Huron comes away with it. It's Young playing back. He'll go cross ice, far side as he sizzles it over to Alex Johnson. Quick snap pass to Matthias Telstrom who fires it up to Scandalberry. Scandalberry into the zone. He spins, plays it to Telstrom, tries throwing into the slot. Pastuka gets a stick to it and now plays it back out in the neutral in the neutral zone. Try to get a stretch pass to Salak. A little too much on it as it was intercepted and the pass comes all the way back in on Mario Cavalieri. Leaves it for his defender Gregory Felder. Quickly over to Tucker Firth. Finds Bonacic at the red line. Zips it over to Salak. Here comes Salak walking in the slot. Quick shot now and takes it Deflection wide. Goes off the end boards. Young trying to pick it up. It's now a couple of black sweaters battling back there. Takes the annex bounce. Comes right out in front of shot and a save by Pasuka. Puck still loose in the crease. It pokes free out on the far side. Oh, good look there for Yuri Pasuka as Peter Banachik was able to find him, but a big save there by Tucker Tynan. He keeps us scoreless here. Four and a half minutes into this one. Clay Keeley resets as the first line comes out for Carolina. Keeley. Plays it near side. Dumas, he'll bring it into the zone. Whiffs on the pass attempt before it gets to Dawson Baker. Baker settles, holds, goes cross side to Clay Keeley. He throws one, it goes deflected, and is sent all the way back down as Cavalieri will come out of his crease. Dan Chartrand, who had a five-minute major for fighting last night, ended up coming with the interception. Quick shot from Graham in the slot, and that one's taken away. Baker ends up fighting this one over to Gus Ford. And has two white sweaters closing in on him. Throws it off the stick of a... Prowler before Baker now tied up the corner. Ford throws a man down into the boards. He disposed of Vincent DeCumbas. Puck comes back out in the slot, though still bouncing around. Here's DeCumbas, a shot and a save by Cavalier. He's able to get the shoulder up there with 14 50 remaining here in the first period. A couple of conversations after the whistle between Dawson Baker and Dan Chartrand. The officials step in, though, and it brings us to our first media timeout. 14.50 remains here in the first period. We're scoreless in game two between Carolina and Port Huron. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready. Back here in Winston Salem, 1450 remains in period number one Carolina and Port Huron. Scoreless and for the first five plus minutes here in game two of three here this week. And this first period is all this season are brought to you by First Bank on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker right now. It's the visitors, Port Huron, leading four to three. Mario Cavalieri has saved all four shots he's seen. On the other side, Tucker Tynan was able to stone Yuri Pastuko, was able to get a feed from Peter Panacic. Puck bounced around. And it stayed out of the crease. It'll be a face-off to the left of Cavalieri. Nate Keeley and Matt Graham in for the draw to restart things here in the first. Graham is tossed out quickly. So that brings in now Dalton J. And he wins it. Back to the point. Deck tries to cycle this one. Comes back out in front. Gaeta ended up not being able to hang on to it there in the slot. And he now gets ran into by James Farmer over at the far half boards. Puck bouncing around. It's being whacked around. It comes back out to the neutral zone where Nate Keeley, he walks it in on the near side. Leaves it for Batita. He'll backhand this one in. Cycles all the way around into the far corner as no one was home there. But Farmer able to work it. Back in deep to Schnapp. Schnapp spins away. Holds on the back end, gets it back out to the point. Farmer just tries to get one in deep and ends up taking a deflection in there to pick up his deck. He ends up pushing it along up to the far half towards the Gaeta. And now Farmer controls in the neutral zone. Farmer dances around a defender, comes in on the near side. Farmer surveying, trying to throw him back out in front. Graham ends up being able to deflect it into the corner as now it comes back out. And here comes Port Huron. 
Brian Parsons plays it off the boards. Cavalieri, he collects behind the net, plays it quickly. Bioni lets it go through his skates, and it comes to Schnapp, who throws one off the back heel. Keeley, and now here's a chance on the far side. Scandalberry, he holds, throws it in on Cavalieri, and he's able to make a save and cover with 13.49 remaining here in the first period. So Mario Cavalieri only saw 26 shots last night. He's already seen five here today. Last night, Port Huron had seven in the first and seven in the second. Face off now to the right of him as it's one back out to the point. But Pastuka is able to knock it away, and now he gets on his horse as he's going to be the first one, too. He's got reinforcements coming. Pastuka drops it back for Salon, ends up in the slot. Panacic trying to get a shot off. Pastuka collects. Carries far dot, finds Banachik a quick shot, and now it's deflected in front. Didn't get a lot of it on it, as now it comes out near side. It's played back out and lofted to center ice. Scandalberry being tangled up. He holds, safe, able to whack it along as he has slack on him. So now he backhands this one in, but another good look there from the check line for Steve Harrison here tonight. Quick tap pass. Here comes Yuri Pastuka across the red line, spins, leaves it for Banachik. Banachik over to Salak, just goes over his stick. So now it's tied up there in the near corner. It's brought back out to the point. Tucker Firth, he holds, finds Banachik, who walks out and leaves it for Firth. Firth sends it back below, comes back out. Firth gets it right back. Pastuka was trying to find Salak. Man goes down in the middle of the zone. No call. Firth on the backhand behind the net. Throws one off the side of the cage and it comes back out in front. As now a couple of extracurriculars down in the far corner behind the play. Matthias Telstrom, he's got no reinforcements. Should just send one in. Cavalieri gloves it. Tries to play quick stretch pass. It's intercepted though. Here's Picard. A shot save. Rebound on the far side though. They hold. Comes back cross crease. Being able to get a stick there with Sucker Firth. Puck bounces around as Salak throws a man to the ground. Now here come the Thunderbirds. Manajic, he leaves it. No one home though as Baker he left it behind. Baker now. He goes back and held control. But this game we saw last night, a lot of physicality. And now the this one's starting to pick up here just eight minutes in. Stretch pass was intercepted as this one comes back in on Mario Cavalieri. And he has to cover with 12-12 remaining here in the first period. We saw last night, though, we saw Justin Bioni. Dropped the gloves against Dan Chartran. That was the only fight that we saw, but the game did get very physical. Some loud hits that rang throughout the annex. And now it's starting to pick up here. Long history between these two sides as the ensuing faceoff is won by Gus Ford. It's tangled up in the corner. It comes out in the near half boards. The Cumbus tries to rattle it down. Kennedy intercepts, plays it near side to Dominic Dumas. Tries to spin his way out of the zone, but he can't. Played in the near corner. Picard gets a stick lifted, gets a right back as he brings it in the backhand, throws one out cross side, comes out to the far point. A quick shot is shouldered away by Cavalier. He goes high off of the glass. It's now Clay Keeley. Going up against the compass in the corner, kicks it over to Joe Kennedy. Who has it on the backhand, trying to work his way around the defender. He throws a man down, but it's but it's taken away. Played back out of the point. Now as Baker puts a big check into Sim, the ensuing shot takes a deflection, ends up in the protective netting with 11.38 remaining here in the first period. So Port Huron early on in this one trying to come out and be the aggressor, trying to be more physical. And right now the Thunderbirds spending some time in their defensive zone. They'll bring up Batita, Schnapp, Nate Keeley, Bioni, and Farmer. It'll be Matt Graham in for the draw here against Nate Keeley to the left of Cavalieri. It's one back to the point. Braden Deck, he holds, sends one intentionally wide. Graham collects behind the net, leaves it, and it comes out near side. Chartrand circles, brings it back to the point. Deck, blue to blue pass on the far side. Johnson sends it right back. Near side, a quick shot, takes a deflection, saved by Cavalieri. Rebound attempt, puck loose on the far side. Second attempt, would not go. And now we got a tie up in the crease. But Mario Cavalier with the puck bouncing around on the far side is able to be able to find it and somehow cover it. Schnapp lost his lid. Is this Dan Chartrand with him? A Cavalier, he made the initial save. The rebound came back out. It got poked around. And no one on Port Huron able to get a good shot off. Cavalier is able to find and cover. He keeps it a scoreless game with 11-19 remaining here in the first period. But Carolina being outshot 11-3 on our Contact LLC shots on goal tracker. Officials taking a while to try to figure this one out. As they continue to have conversations with Port Huron. But Cavalier, another big save there. 
And now the draw will come to his left. Carolina still trying to find their footing here in this one. Face-off is won by Peter Panacic. He plays it off the back end boards as Tucker Firth leaves it near side. Salak will go up against Deck. So this one's rifled back out into the neutral zone. This one's going to go all the way down, and this one goes for icing. So another offensive zone draw, but it's the check line as well as Firth and Felder. They just came out on the ice after the previous cover by Cavalieri. So Thunderbirds have fresh legs out there for now. Now the draw on the opposite side. Merritt and Panacic in for the draw. Face off is won by Merritt. Back out to the point. Johnson walks in. Quick shot. Takes a deflection. Comes out on the near side. Tries to play it back out to the point. Scandalberry almost able to get a deflection there. But he ends up playing it back out. Comes back out behind the corner. And Salak now holds after Firth absorbs a hit. Applies a check there on the far side against Sam Merritt. It's played though by Yuri Pestuka. Goes off the leg of a prowler before it's whacked at his own blue line. Back out to the... The red line and play quickly. Scannell Berry walks in. A quick shot and a glove save by Cavalieri as he covers. <laughs> Tucker Scannell Berry, he can score. He had a hat trick two games ago and a 6-3 win last Saturday in Biloxi. McCard the only score last night, though, for Port Huron with these two sides. A long history. First time ever playing was in 2017. It was a 10-3 win for Port Huron, but since then, Carolina, they have really dominated this series all time, leading 36-16-3, to to including knocking Port Huron out of the playoffs each of the last two seasons. Face off to the left of Cavalier. He's tied up, played back out to the point, being able to keep it in with the glove, though, is Frank Schumacher as he gets ran into by Dumas. Puck's still loose, though, and now it's tangle up. Schumacher tries to repay the favor, but Dumas is able to withstand the hit, and he plays it back as the Thunderbirds clear the zone. And now here comes Dalton Young. Quick pass on the near side to Jay. He gets intercepted by Firth, who finds Gus Ford. Ford across the blue line, walks in. Will chase after it in the far half boards. Play behind the net now. Young and Dumas going to work. Baker, he comes in. He's able to take it away before it's sent back to Dumas in the corner. He gets dispossessed. Nice job there by Evan Foley before it's played back out to the point. Kennedy gets a stick to it as the Thunderbirds are able to keep it in the zone. Dumas on the back end. In the corner, leaves it for Ford. Ford back out to the point. Kennedy, he holds and will cycle it back in. A little too much on it there. He's trying to get there with Foley. It's played back behind the net now as Baker was just trying to cycle. Kennedy has a hop over his stick. Tangled up now at the far point by the Prowler's bench. Is it still not clear? Dumas will just send the one off the end boards. Comes back out in front. Tynan is able to play it to Foley. And it's played back up the near side. Nine and a half minutes to go here in the first period. No score between Carolina and Port Huron. This one's rattled all the way back behind the net. Tying in right in front of the Zamboni doors. Ends up having a little trouble at it at first, but Schumacher is able to leave it near side. And now here comes Jay, who gets a right back to Dalton Young. Trying to find a quick snap pass up to the blue line. It goes off of Bioni, and Picard's just able to back in this one in. Felder calls off Cavalieri as now he holds on the forehand. Sends it over to Bioni, who rattles it around the boards on the far side to Nate Keeley. Keeley plays it on the backhand. He retreats back behind his own cage. As now Cavalieri gets ran into. The hand goes up. A delayed penalty coming up. As Cavalieri makes his way to the bench. He's got words there as well as now Schnapp having a conversation with Vincent DeCumbus. It's played near side. Schnapp, he signs this one all the way back down. Extra attacker is on. Felder walks in. Quick shot. Takes a deflection. It's played by DeCumbus. And that will bring up the power play. Mario Cavalieri ran into by Vincent DeCumbus. The Thunderbirds will be heading it to the power play for the first time here this evening when we return. No score between Carolina and Port Huron. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor. And she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Carolina heading to a little Italy pizza and Italian restaurant power play for the first time here this evening. 
Vincent DeCumbis called for two minutes for interference after he ran into Mario Cavalieri in his crease. Cavalieri had some words from him as he was, he was making his way back over to the bench as the Thunderbirds got ready to bring on the extra attacker with the delayed penalty. Saw Jacob Schnapp also talking to DeCumbis as well. But so the Thunderbirds will be heading to the power play for the first time here this evening. Carolina last night, a couple of chances, not able to come away with one as they come into tonight at 22% on the power play. For Huron on the other end, their penalty kill at 72%. That's towards the bottom of the FBHL. Face off to the left of Tynan's, won by the Thunderbirds as we're back underway here with eight and a half minutes to go in the first period. It's held by Gus Ford behind the net. He circles, looks, throws one back down the slot. Puck bouncing around. Salak just outside of his reach. Ford, though, taps it back out to the point as Baker sends it right back into the corner. Giving chase in the first one there is Alex Johnson before he gets tangled up. Salak now back to Baker, holding at the point. Goes far side to Banachik. Banachik with 149 assists here, trying to find 150. Finds Ford behind the net. He holds, sends it near side to Baker, just had his 100th point last night. Pastuka, top of the slot, back to Baker, sends it right back. He holds. These two play a little pitch and catch. It's played far side of the point. Pastuka is able to cycle this one back in deep. Ford sends it right back, out to Baker. 113 remaining on the power play. Baker walks into the slot, ends up losing it, and this one will be cleared down as Cavalieri will play it. Port Huron goes off for a change. Stretch pass to Gus Ford. Ford has to lock. Walk in. A tip and a save by Tynan. Puck bouncing around, but he's able to recover. Now Vanacek and Graham going at it after Salak and Graham have a conversation. Something is brewing here tonight. You saw last night in the FPHL. Between Mississippi and Baton Rouge. Saw several game misconducts handed out in the first period, including or as a result of the benches clearing. And so after the pushing and shoving, they're going to move the face off back out in front of the Port Huron bench. 7.33 remaining here in the first period. 58 seconds remaining on the two minute interference call against Vincent DeCumbis. Thunderbirds control off the faceoff. Firth will back in this one in. Rattles all the way around the boards, comes out near side. It'll be whacked back out to the point. Schnapp, a nice job being able to keep it in. As he cycles it back in, but there to play it is Schumacher. Sends it over to the far point. Firth, he's able to to send it down to Clay Keeley. Keeley backhands it back out to Firth who walks the blue line, sends one in. Shot save, puck still loose though in front. And a whistle. And a couple sticks tied up in front of the net. It's now Graham and Batita. They chat. There are 32 seconds remaining on the power play for the Thunderbirds. Tynan so far today, five saves on five shots. Thunderbirds only had three heading into this power play. Now they have two here over the last 90 seconds. So face off to the left of Tucker Tynan. Gus Ford is able to win the draw and it's brought back out to the point. On the far side, Pastuka sends it down to Ford. Has it on the forehand, brings it back out. Net goes off its moorings as Tynan was trying to push and now They'll bring down some booze here from the Annex Faithful this evening. Good crowd on hand. First three game series here this weekend at home for Carolina. 4 1 win last night, trying to take the series here tonight. But Port Huron, they have come out ready to go. Steve Harrison knew they were. And so now Carolina trying to be able to weather the storm here, be able to find one. Here with 6.58 remaining in the first period. Ford able to win the draw again to Pasuka back to the point. Pasuka gets it right back, plays it over to Ford. Ford holds near side, a quick shot, and that one ends up going off the back of the cage. Ford plays it back out to the point. Baker, he holds, sends it down to Ford. Ford at the near dot. Surveys, holds, leaves it for Baker. Baker, cross ice into the slot. Pasuka leaves it for Ford. 
Brought back out. Puck goes off a skate. Now loose on the right of the net. Salak a quick attempt. And Tynan's able to cover as now Jan Salak talking with Dan Chartrand. Decumbus did make his way out of the penalty box. The Thunderbirds unsuccessful on the power play. We continue to have words between the two sides. And it has been... Interesting to see so far. An attacking zone faceoff. Steve Harrison brings out his third line of Schnapp, Keeley. That's Nate Keeley. John Batita, Clay Keeley as well out there. But James Farmer. Nate Keeley's toss. Batita in for the draw now against Tristan Sim. Tie up on the face off. It comes to Alex Johnson. Who has it on the back end. Plays it near side. Plays it off the boards. And here comes Port Huron. It's Sim. But Petita coming from behind. He's able to dispossess him. But it comes back out to the neutral zone. Johnson will back in this one in. Cavalieri will have to play it with his blocker. And he covers as he had Picard starting to bear down on him. And he freezes with 6-14 remaining here in the first period. So Carolina on that power play only got three shots. One of those coming at the last second, the close attempt for Jan Salak. Another man is thrown out of the face-off circle. This time it's Sam Merritt. Quick trigger here tonight though. Face-off is one back to the point as Port Huron controls. Here in their attacking zone. Behind the net, Scannelberry. Spins away, has got Nate Keeley on him. He's able to dance her away from him. Scannelberry holds at the near half boards. He'll just throw it in, takes a deflection. Cavalieri got the right pad to it as Schnapp takes a whack, and this one comes back out to the neutral zone. We're back to recollect is Brian Parsons. Puck goes off of a skate as Telstrom was trying to get it into the zone, but it's played back at his own blue line by Alex Johnson. Johnson plays it off the boards. Clay Keeley intercepts, gets it to Batita. Batita dancing, finds it far side to Pastuka. Pastuka waiting for reinforcements, dances into the corners, got the official right there as the defender doesn't have a stick, comes out near side. Here's Farmer, a quick shot. That one's deflected into the corner by Tynan. Jan Salak to the rebound, but ends up being dispossessed. As now here comes Port Huron with Scannelberry. And Pastuka ran him. Instead, he'll just rattle around. Cavalieri gave it a look, but it gives a chance for James Farmer to take it out of the zone himself. Farmer across the blue line, walks in. He holds, surveys, looks, tries throwing in front. He's not able to as he gets ran into the boards. And Salak's not able to hang on. Now here comes the Prowlers here with... Five minutes to go here in the first period. No score between Carolina and Port Huron. And on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. Good crowd on hand here at the Annex for the second of three this weekend. Carolina trying to be able to pick up three points and keep pace with Columbus and hope Blue Ridge can pick up a win. Peter Panacic behind the net. He holds on the back end. Sends it back out to the point. Joe Kennedy has to get rid of it. Throws it off the end boards for its tap by Tynan. Now a tie-up as Panacic goes in to hit Graham. It comes out near side. Kennedy walks in on the back end. He'll just throw it in. Tynan kicks that one away out to the far corner. Kennedy in the corner. Now tied up as the puck gets tangled up against the skates. Down goes a man. As a hit from behind, Jan Salak didn't like that. As it looked like Graham ended up cross-checking Panacci from behind. And so the Thunderbirds are going to be heading to the power play for the second time this evening. Less than five minutes remain here in the first period. Carolina back to the power play when we come back. Tied at zero. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. So Thunderbirds back to a little Italy. Pizza and an Italian restaurant power play. After a two minute cross check was called against the player coach Matt Graham. 
Busy night around the rest of the FBHL. One of the game in action right now. We'll get to that at the first intermission report. Take a look at the stats. Running through some highlights. Take a look around the rest of the league as well. But Carolina to the power play for the second time this evening. Last night they went over on the man advantage. One of those coming at the end of the game as Carolina ended the game a man up. Three shots on goal on the first power play for Carolina. Now Ford in for the draw to the left of Tucker Tyne. And face off is one back to Dawson Baker. Leaves it for Peter Panacic. He's still searching for an assist. That'll be his 150th of his career. He finds Gus Ford behind the net. Holds it on the forehand, sends it near half boards to Baker at the dot. Leaves it for Ford. Ford walks in in the slot. Stick lift is still rattling around though, and his shot goes high. Slock the first to it in the corner. Gets to Baker. Sends it back to Ford. Walking in, sends it cross ice, and a little too much on it for Panacic as it deflects off his stick. Ends up in the protective netting. That's the same exact play that we saw last Saturday in the first period. Gus Ford to Peter Panacic. That allowed for Carolina to take a 1 0 lead in that first period against Columbus. This time, though, against Port Huron. Not able to find it there. They're still out there, though. Tie up on the faceoff. Salak is able to step in and get it out to Pastuka. Finds Panacic. Far half port. Sends it to Ford. Brings it behind the net. To Baker. Right back to Ford. Searching. Looking. Sends it back out. Baker. He holds. Cross ice to Pastuka. Panacic now. Edge of the dot, back out a one-timer, takes a deflection, that one goes wide. And it'll be rattled around the boards by Braden Deck. Comes over to Dawson Baker, though. 107 remaining on the power play. Four dispossessed. He'll chase after it into the corner. He gets it back out to the point. Pastuka at the blue line. Sends it to Ford, walking in, dancing in. Tries to go cross ice, trying to find Baker, but a nice job there by Evan Foley, being able to intercept this. Now it's played back. A quick stretch pass up to Gus Ford from Cavalieri. Ford gets tangled up. This one goes in deep into the corner. Schumacher will play it far side as Dominic Dumas is onto the ice. John Batita just coming off the bench, steps in, intercepts. This one's whack out to a vacant point. Now here's a chance for Port Huron coming two on one. Up the far side. Here's the Cumbus, sends it near side. A one-timer, and that one goes wide on the far side. Sim was trying to get Cavalieri going on the opposite edge. Here come the Thunderbirds, three on two if they hurry. Far side, a quick deflection, and that one ends up saved by Tynan. Comes back out to first. Sends it over to Batita. Batita with a white sweater coming after him, sends it over to Firth, finds Dumas, he holds, sends it to Ford, Ford at the near half boards with nine seconds remaining on the power play, quick shot that goes off the leg of Johnson, comes back out to Firth, he has to try to play it and now throws it off the boards, Keeley cross ice to Dumas, Dumas walks in, oh, it's a beautiful find and that one ends up being deflected wide by Batita as the net comes off its moorings once again with Graham coming out of the penalty box, so a beautiful feed there and the tip from Batita just goes wide. And it keeps us scoreless here at 2.18 remaining in the first period. So Carolina, thanks to two power plays, starting to get some pressure. Tucker Tynan's been up to the task so far, as well as Mario Cavalieri. 14-9, the shots on goal in favor of Port Huron on our Comtech LLC shots on goal track where Carolina now 0 for 2 here tonight on the power play as they came in top 3 in the league this weekend at 25%. And at the 22 at the start of this evening. Last night Carolina 0 for 4 on the power play. Now 0 for 6 here this weekend. Third line got the first one last night. Now trying to do that same here tonight. Nate Keeley in for the draw against Matt Graham and just came out of the penalty box. And the faceoff is one and whack behind the net. This is played quickly. Puck loose now as Nate Keeley throws Graham into the board. It's a tie up with the Cumbus, Graham, Nate Keeley, Tristan Sim, and Jacob Schnapp. Schnapp just trying to poke at it. It's still loose by the point. On the near side, Schnapp gets thrown to the ground as the puck comes back down to the neutral zone as Sim is able to clear, but Joe Kennedy, he holds on the forehand, brings it up the near side. He's got a couple of white sweaters coming after him. He walks in, Kennedy on the back end. Going to work against Schumacher, brings it all the way into the corner as now he gets pinned into the boards. Still able to control though as he dances out of it. Now he's got Brian Parsons on him. Kennedy still being able to be, have control as he goes down right by the Zamboni doors. And now four sweaters going after it. Pokes free. Batita 
Dances around to hit. Leaves it for Kennedy in a quick shot. is saved by Tynan and goes out of play with a minute 20 left to go here in the first period. This one really starting to pick up though. Physicality, the big hits for both sides. Now an attacking zone face off the check line of Gregory Felder and Justin Bioni. To the right of time and it's tied up and they're gonna redo it. Tucker Tynan, he'll make his way out of the crease. Uh, two steps outside of the crease. Away in this face-off. Not the conventional netminder. Face-off is tied up, and it's taken by Dalton Young. Brings it out from behind his own net. Walks into the slot. Quick pass to Telstrom. Gets it to the skates of Scandalberry. It's left at the blue line. It's Pastuka. Wanks it over to Bonacic. Trying to find it right back to Pastuka. Pucks takes his reflection. And it's left at the red line for Sam Merritt. Merritt up the far side, and they're going to be offside. You have 56 seconds remaining in the first period. Good opportunity it looked like there for Port Huron. Just a little too anxious. Now it brings up a neutral zone faceoff here on the near side across from the Thunderbirds bench. Right outside their defensive zone. Faceoff is won by Bonacic. He plays it back to Felder. Holds in his own slot. It's got Gaeta closing in on him. Plays it off the boards. Felder is able to go, and he's able to clear the zone. It's played by Port here on now on the near side with Brian Parsons. He'll loft this one in. It goes high off of the glass. Almost went out of play. Gaeta, the first one to it behind the net. Hands it on the back end. Here with 38 seconds remaining in the first period. Far side. A quick shot from Johnson. Takes a deflection, and Cavalieri makes a reactionary save. Threat's still not over, though, as Bioni waxes this one back out with Port Huron trying to get it back into the slot. Here comes Salak with 25 seconds. Salak spinning at the circles. Has it on the back end, looks to play it in deep, takes a deflection as it's whacked off the boards by Johnson. Johnson and Panacek now as Salak tied up. But nine seconds left to go here in the first period. Puck still tangled up at the half boards. Panacek still trying to whack at it. Now three seconds and two, one second, and that is how the first period will come to an end. And now Johnson, he wants to drop the gloves with someone. Johnson is furious here on the near side. Throws a quick check to the Peter Vanacic as the puck was tangled up there. Johnson, he's just itching to drop the gloves. So he's still at, he's still chatting. And now he's going to be escorted back to the locker room as both teams make their way. Port Huron now trying to plead their case. But we're through the first 20 minutes here in Winston-Salem on our Comtech LLC Shots on Gold Tracker. It's 15 for Port Huron, 10 for Carolina. Entertaining first 20 minutes. Both sides still searching for the first goal of the evening. But this one... Only going to get better as the night rolls on. We've reached the first intermission. No score between Carolina and Port Huron. We're back to Winston-Salem with the first intermission report on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, 
We craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! In Port Huron. No score after the first 20 minutes here in game two this weekend between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers. An entertaining and action-packed first 20 minutes despite neither side being able to find the score sheet. The shots on goal in that first period. Port Huron with 15. Carolina only with 10 in our first bank first period. And our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Welcome to the first intermission report. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. And not much going on in that first period when it comes to the box score, but the physicality in this one definitely has started to ramp up. It has been, it was physical last night. We saw the gloves get dropped between Dan Chartrand as well as Justin Bioni. And so this one, you know, that Port Huron after the loss last night, they were going to come out firing, and they were able to in that first period for about the first seven, eight minutes, maybe even the first half of that first period, it was Port Huron who really had, were on the front foot and Carolina was, had to react and have to try to be able to find a way to be able to settle into this game. The thing that ended up aiding that at the 11.25 mark, Vincent Decumbus ended up being called for goalie interference. Thunderbirds went to the power play for the first time. They were able to start getting some pressure in the attacking zone, but nothing came of that power play. And then about four minutes later, Matt Graham at the 15.38 mark was called for a two-minute cross-checking. Minor penalty, and so Carolina went back to the power play, but they're not able to beat Tucker Tynan quite yet here tonight. Tynan coming into today. This is his fourth game this season, one and two, with a 270 goals against average. He, had, he was good, allowed only two goals through 40 minutes his last time out before allowing two in the third. That ended up resulting in a Mississippi 4-3 win back two Fridays ago in Biloxi. This Port Huron team in the midst of a long seven game road trip as they will go back these two signs will see each other in just a couple weeks as well up in Port Huron. Carolina right now only 10 shots in that first period and now they're trying to figure out a way to be able to fend off this Port Huron team. Mario Cavalieri so far here tonight another day at the office for him 15 saves on 15 shots for the Ontario native He's been good so far here this evening as he has been all season long. So Carolina in Port Huron, scoreless after the first 20 minutes here at the, fifth, at the first intermission report, just about 15 minutes until puck drop for the start of the second period. Don't forget one more game coming up tomorrow here at the Annex between Port Huron and Carolina. There will be a 405 puck drop here from the Annex. If you haven't gotten your tickets already, make sure to head to Ticketmaster.com be able to find your tickets and to make sure you can be here to experience all the action here at Winston-Salem this season. Two more home games coming up next weekend as well as the Binghamton Black Bears come to town. Binghamton, since the last time that Carolina has seen them, has still been able to roll. They did lose in regulation once. But Binghamton right now sitting at 35 points, most points in the FPHL here this season. They have 11-1-3 record. So next weekend is going to be a fun weekend here at the Annex. It's a fun weekend a couple weeks back up in Binghamton, and it's going to be more of the same here coming up next weekend as well. But no score here in Game 2 between Port Huron and Carolina. Thunderbirds trying to take the series here tonight and try to be able to take six points in two games here against Port Huron. We'll take a look around the rest of the FPHL. We've got one other game going on right now, and then we got more to come as well as the first intermission report continues on the other side of this timeout. No scoring between Carolina and Port Huron. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. What's up, everybody? My name is Zach Taylor, and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day.
and go birds. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds! Hi, I'm Stuart with Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I've been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in cans at the games or come down and see us We're here in downtown Winston-Salem. Go Birds! Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. We're at the first intermission here at the Annex on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. Foggy outside, but this one has been good so far here tonight. Good crowd on hand here on a Saturday evening in Winston-Salem. No score between the Thunderbirds and Prowlers after the first 20 minutes. As now we'll take a look around the rest of the FPHL here this evening. Taking a look, we'll start with the one of the game in action right now in the FPHL, and that's coming from First Arena in Elmira, New York. Watertown and Elmira doing battle there up in upstate New York. And right now it's the visitors, the Watertown Wolves, holding a 2-1 to one lead over the Elmira River Sharks. It was Darius Davidson being able to get Elmira on the board first before a pair of goals. One of those coming late in the first period from Carter Thornton. Ends up making it a 2-1 lead for Watertown as they're at the first intermission. That's the only game underway right now, but one game that the Thunderbirds... Be keeping an eye on here in early December is the one going on at the Apex Center up in Whitsville. From Whitsville, Virginia, Blue Ridge in Columbus for game two of that set. Last night it was Columbus, a 6-4 to four win over the Blue Ridge Bobcats as Columbus was able to stay in front of Carolina in this continental division. Well, they're about to get going for the start of game number two in that one. Columbus in Blue Ridge coming up at the top of the hour. Columbus at 26 points off to an 8-1-2 start with Carolina sitting in second with 24. Blue Ridge 3-8-2 here in their inaugural season this year. A couple other games in the FBHL here this evening. There'll be another one between Danbury and Motor City. They went to overtime last night. Motor City a 5-4 win in OT. As Motor City trying to pick up two wins in Danbury here this week. And that game starting in just a matter of moments as well from the Nutmeg State. And then one other game going on in the FPHL here this evening after a 5-1 win last night for Baton Rouge over Mississippi. In a game that saw the benches clear, saw several game misconducts. It's Mississippi and Baton Rouge going for game number two. That one had a whole myriad of fines and suspensions after the actions, after what resulted from the festivities down in the bayou a night ago. Mississippi and Baton Rouge going for game number two. Mississippi currently sitting six points back of Carolina at 6-6-1 six, six, this season with 18 points on the campaign. All right now back here in Winston-Salem. We're at the first intermission. Carolina and Port Huron scoreless after the first 20 minutes of play. Thunderbirds slow out of the gates, but able to work their way and settle into that first period. We'll have to see what can happen here in period number two. They're able to score it. 19 seconds in last night, it was Gus Ford who made it a 2 nothing game. Well, now, what will the second period bring up? We'll take another time out and come back and reset things for the start of the second period. On the other side of this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. 
Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Sales. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go to realtor for all your real estate needs. Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Getting close to the start of the second period here in Winston-Salem. It's a scoreless game between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers here on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. That first period, saw back and forth action, saw some good chances for both sides. Both goaltenders have been up to the task so far here tonight. Tucker Tynan, 15, 10 saves on 10 shots, while Mario Cavalieri, 15 saves on 15 attempts. Here so far this evening. Carolina to the power and play twice tonight. They came away empty both times. Vincent Tecumbus was called for a goalie interference for a two-minute minor at the 11.25 point of that first period. And then Matt Graham at the 15.38 mark was called for a two-minute minor for cross-checking as he ended up hitting the back of Peter Panacic. Panacic is trying to find his 150th assist in his FBHL career. He's also sitting on 79 goals as well for the Czech Republic native. Dawson Baker just eclipsing the century mark in points in his career last night with his assist at the 19 second mark of that second period that gave Carolina a two to nothing lead. Gus Ford a pair of points last night as he ended up picking up his 100th goal last week now at 101 for the Tilsonburg Ontario native. Thunderbirds right now trying to find a way to beat Tucker Tynan. You know, there's about five minutes left to go here in the first intermission. Oh, well, the ice can hold up as well. You're in front of a good crowd on hand here on a Saturday night. If you haven't already, game three coming up tomorrow at 4.05 p.m. Puck drop. Scheduled for them between Carolina and Port Huron. It should be another good one. It's been an entertaining first 80 minutes of action here this weekend. It's been physical. It's been fast-paced. So more of the same here in the first period. Now just looking to find some scoring here in the middle 20 minutes here on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. Carolina trying to get to 10 wins in 12 games here in 2023-2024. Also trying to extend their win streak to six games and try to pick up their fifth straight one as well for this Port Huron Prowlers team. We'll have to see who will come out swinging in this second period. This is the period that the Thunderbirds have struggled with at times. Last, last night, it entered a action-packed second period, and now Carolina's going to try to come out and be able to try to take an advantage, take a lead over the middle 20 minutes. We'll come back after this timeout to be able to bring you the second period between Carolina and Port Huron. Good one on hand. Don't go anywhere. We're back after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. 
Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. We're back here in Winston-Salem. We're getting set for the start of the second period, the period of the long change. As Port Huron makes their way back out onto the ice to a chorus of boos. Here from the faithful on hand here at the annex as the Thunderbirds have come back out onto the ice from their dressing room. In that first period, saw the physicality ramp up. Carry over from last night. Port Huron, though, ended up getting some good opportunities. Thunderbirds had to grow into that first period. And now we're going to try to come out fast here in the second, try to be able to take an advantage. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB, our production crew of Dylan Klein, Jack O'Connell, Logan Allen, and Kayla Blazier. And back in our WTOB studios, Rick O'Neill, the radio guy. Making sure we're on the air everywhere here on a Saturday evening in Winston-Salem. That first period shots 15 to 10 in favor of the Port Huron Prowlers. The visitors trying to come away with a victory here tonight and set up a rubber match tomorrow. Carolina trying to take the series here this weekend with a victory here tonight. Carolina in this second period. Last night, it will come away with the goal last weekend against Columbus. On the Saturday night in game two, ended up giving up two goals. As it looks like the Thunderbirds, Ryan Parsons is in the penalty box. And They haven't announced it yet, but Parsons, on the score sheet, said that he has a 10-minute misconduct for abuse of officials. But we'll be five on five to start things out with Brian Parsons. Has some time in the penalty box to start things out as we're underway for the start of the second period, which is brought to you by Flow Automotive. Carolina going left to right across. And Gus Ford will start and walk up the near side. Ford at the dot, walks in, a quick shot and a save by Tynan as Ford goes tumbling off the back of the cage and bangs into the boards. That's covered by Tynan and so it'll be in an early attacking zone faceoff for Carolina just 16 seconds into the second period. Parsons in the box for 10 minutes, but no power play. As Gus Ford was out for the draw, he looks to be all right after he went crashing into the boards behind the net. And then is going to bring out the second line now and bring out Tucker Firth and Joe Kennedy. Banachik and Merritt in for the draw is now Tucker Scandalberry and Jan Salak. Some pushing and shoving before the drop. You see the two of them, they're having a conversation there. 
Now the official talking over on the far side. And Merritt gets tossed out of the faceoff circle. So Scannelberry now, and now they cycle back. After all that, Merritt ends up winning the draw. Peter Benachik is not happy. So he's talking with the referee, heading back out to the neutral zone. Joe Kennedy in his own defensive zone. He holds, plays it up the near side. Pastuka just deflects this one, and it's gloved down by Dalton Young, who sends it over. It's lost. Benachik holds. He surveys after the turnover, sends it cross sides. Pastuka throws one in front, and Tynan gets a stick there as he whacks it into the corner as Young gets it up. To center ice for Tucker Firth at the red line. Plays it quickly. Panacic throws it hard off of the boards. Goes off the back of the cage. You're 45 seconds into the second period. Frank Schumacher backhands it. Some Telstrom and leaves it there. Now here comes Sam Merritt. Merritt leaves it. Scandalberry, a quick shot. Save. Rebound, though. And it comes back out as Panacic is able to control. Mario Cavalieri there, an early save. A saucer pass. A little too much on it as Scandalberry will rattle this one back in. And Cavalieri plays it directly behind his net. Firth has to get rid of it quickly. Sends it over to Kennedy, but it's turned over. Here's a chance. Quick shot. Graham is stoned by Cavalieri. It's saved, but brought back out to the point. Johnson keeps it in, takes it a flex. It ends up going harmlessly wide as Pastuka whacks it once again, but Graham intercepts the near half boards. It's now shoveled down to Foley, who leaves it for Graham behind the net. Sends it back out in front of shot, and it's saved by Cavalieri. And a man bearing right down on him, Cavalieri able to hold his post strong as this one goes off of a man, and Cavalieri now plays behind in his own net. Sends it out to the far point. Deck will send one in, and a nice job there by Joe Kennedy intercepting. Kennedy off the far side will back in this one in, cross corner as the Thunderbirds go off for a change. Tynan will zip one over on the near side, and it ends up going past his intended target of Chartrand, James Former. The lefty holds in front of his own net, and will cycle back as he has Vincent DeCumbus bearing down on him. And he'll reset. Just over two minutes gone here in the second period. Carolina and Port Huron, both sides still searching for the first goal this evening. Backhanded in by Dominic Dumas, Clay Keeley. First one to it behind the net. Brings it out on the backhand as the crowd starting to get into it as the Let's Go Thunderbirds chant breaks out. Farmer up the far boards. Brings it in, centers one, ends up being knocked down though by Schumacher. He's trying to get it to Baker who almost just runs in now. Runs into the glass as he's trying to go after Decumbus. Dumas dances around, runs into the official as he ends up going down. It's played back out on the near side. Dalton Young with two black sweaters around him, spins one out to the far side. Farmer stepping up on the four check, puck bounces around, comes out, and now here comes Brandon Picard. He had a goal last night, he's got 14 points on the season. Picard gets ran into by Clay Keeley who just sends him into the boards. And now Dumas, he gets flattened by Tristan Sim as the puck comes free out on the near side. Felder just is able to get a stick to it and sends it back into the Defensive zone, and this one will be cleared all the way in. Goes over the stick of Cavalieri. He'll now hold it for Clay Keeley. He's got Dalton J coming after him, and a quick stretch pass to Gus Ford. Ford holds, circles back at the half port, sends it to Petita in the corner, going up against Foley. Walking between some skates as Ford makes his way over to the bench, and Nate Keeley joins. Puck still loose. Still tied up, rather, before Alex Johnson plays it back out. Felder able to keep it in, just throws one wide on the far side. And Schnapp and Deck go after it at the far half boards. Nate Keeley throws a man into the boards. It comes back out on the near side. Johnson with Petita bearing down on him. We'll just rattle this one. This one will go all the way down for icing. Here is 16-14 remaining in the second period. So the Thunderbirds starting to get some sustained attacking zone time. Still only one shot on Goldo here in this second period. And now is at the jump from the Gus Ford chance that Tucker Tynan was able to save. Face off to the left of Tynan. It's won by Nate Keeley. Batita backhands it to Felder. He'll cycle it all the way out into the far corner. Schnapp dances around Johnson. He gets his stick to it first. Leaves it for Batita, who spins. Throws one to Keeley. Who loses an edge behind the net. Gets back up. Has deck on him. It's now the puck once again. Tied up on the boards. Batita whacking at it. He's able to poke it free. Sends it back out to the point. Bioni looks. A quick shot and a save by Tynan. Good look there for Justin Bioni. Just throwing in on net as now Schnapp. Tangled up with Foley as well as Alex Johnson after the whistle. With 15.52 remaining here in the second period, Carolina and Port Huron still scoreless. To the face off to the right at Tynan. Check line out there with Joe Kennedy and Tucker Firth. Firth waiting at the top of the dot, ends up being tangled up. 
Telstrom plays it high at the glass. This one trickles back out to the Thunderbirds logo at center ice where Firth plays it back to his D partner, Joe Kennedy. Played up near side. Salak at the blue line, and then it's offside as Pastuco is already in. Manachik is still animated over there on the far side. He has been, he's had something all night. He's had some words for the referees all evening. As now, he's kicked out. Face off is won by Merritt. He holds in his own defensive zone, plays it quickly out on the near side as Joe Kennedy holds it at the red line, cycles it in. Tynan lets it go to the far corner with 15 and a half minutes to go. But Atchik applies a good check and this one's cleared all the way back out to the neutral zone. Kennedy plays it off the boards. Pastuco will just cycle it in as Young holds on the near half boards. Saucers one back out to the blue line. Scandalberry gets a stick to it as he gets it to Merritt. Over to Telstrom. Walks in. He forgot the puck is now comes out near side. Here's Pastuca. Leaves it for Salak. Salak walking in. Near dot. He waits. Brings it back. Out to Kennedy. Cross ice pass off the boards for the top of the circles. Spins back. Under 15 to go here in the second. Kennedy now. Searching, a shot, and that one sails high off of the glass. Firth just sends this one back in behind the net. Salak on the forehand. He holds, sends one to Baker, a shot, and a save by Tynan. Oh, the best opportunity of the night there, right for Dawson Baker with 14.59 remaining here in the second period, but Tucker Tynan, a big save. So he keeps us scoreless. Carolina and Port Huron, no score. At the first media timeout of the second period. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns, right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Carolina and Port Huron scoreless with 14.58 remaining in the second period. Good look for Dawson Baker right before we added to the media timeout, but Tucker Tynan a big save. As Baker got a nice feed and as he'll just walk into the slot. A good save by Tucker Tynan. He keeps us scoreless here in the second period. Shots in our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal tracker are 18 to 12 in favor of the visitors, the Port Huron Prowlers. Four to one win last night for Carolina, who sit at nine, two and zero oh on the season with 24 points. Port Huron five, five and one with 15 over their first 11 games. Face off the restart will come to the left of Tucker Tynan. With us for Dawson Baker, Dominic Dumas, James Farmer and Clay Keeley. The five out there for Steve Harrison off the reset. They wait for the clock to run off. As the faceoff is won by Tristan Sim, but Gus Ford first to it. Ford holds as it spins back. He's able to get around two defenders. Throws it over to Baker at the far dot. So he gets ran into by Sim. They exchange some pleasantries as Clay Keeley backtracks, sends it over to James Farmer. Farmer. With 14.25 remaining here in the second period. Cycles it in. Dumas going into the corner. So the puck gets tied up once again along the boards. Pokes free just for a quick second. As it looked like the Cumbus thought he came away with it. But now he just shovels it over to the far side. Dawson Baker the first one there. He'll cycle it back in deep. Dumas leaves it for Gus Ford who holds. And the hand goes up. And a penalty is called. Looks like Dawson Baker making his way over. He's got words for Alex Johnson, but Dawson Baker is going to be heading to the penalty box. So Dawson Baker at the six-minute mark here to 14 minutes remaining in the second period is off for a slash. So the Thunderbirds in the attacking zone end up taking a penalty. And so now the penalty kill out for the first time this evening. As Nate Keeley is tossed 
from the faceoff dot. Jacob Schnapp now in for the draw. Five on four action. Here for the two minute slashing call against Dawson Baker. And the faceoff is won by Port Huron. It's Alex Johnson. Sends the near side and gets it right back. Goes D to D on the far side. Telstrom back to Johnson. Walking in. Leaves it. Scandalberry a shot. And now it's blocked by Felder. And it'll rattle this one around the boards. It won't clear though. Telstrom keeps it in on the far point. Walks in. Top of the circle. Sends it back out. Too much on the pass. Johnson isn't able to control. And now Port Huron will have to get back on side. But ends up trickling into the zone. Scandalberry touched it. And so 22 seconds have ran off here on the penalty kill for Carolina. In a neutral zone faceoff. Carolina 85% on the penalty kill here this season. On the other side, Port here on 25% on the power play. Last night it was a five-minute major against Joe Kennedy. And Carolina was only able to only gave up one goal on the five minutes of five on four. To come to Hill hold behind his own net off of the faceoff. Sends it up near side. Here's Sam Merritt. Across the red line with some speed. Walks in. He puts the brakes on. Gets it to the compass. Thrown back in. Gets tangled up in the skates of Merritt. As Joe Kennedy battles along the boards with Graham and Merritt. Puck now at the half boards. Comes back out. Merritt walking in near side. Cavalieri is able to hold his post as it pokes free. And Joe Kennedy controls. Kennedy with Nate Keeley. Working two on two. Kennedy fakes. Circles, holds, comes out on the far side, spins back here with a minute remaining on the two-minute slashing call against Dawson Baker. It's Graham at center ice, leaves it for Decumbus. Gets it back to Graham. Graham backhands one. He was trying to go far side for Picard. It takes a deflection, comes out in the corner. Back out to the point. Dalton J. Over to Decumbus. Top of the dots, trying to throw one in. It gets to Picard. He ends up getting poke checked, though, by Farmer. Comes back out. Quick shot. That one got blocked in front. Looked like it hit Graham. Puck still not cleared, though. Decumbus. Over to Jay, gets it right back, sends it far side. Picard, a quick shot, that's like a deflection, goes high off the glass, comes out on the near side. 26 seconds remain on the penalty kill. Behind the net, Merritt goes out far side. Picard at the, at the dot, a quick shot, and a glove save by Cavalieri. And he covers with 18 seconds remaining on the penalty kill and 12-18 remaining here in this one. A lot of zone time here on the main advantage for Port Huron, but they haven't been able to really get too many shots off. Only two so far here on this power play. And now a face off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. We Scandalberry and Monachik in for the draw. Tangle up, comes free, and is sent out to the half boards. Gaeta back to the point. Schumacher to Gaeta. Now sends it deeper in for Chartrand, plays it out near side. Johnson at the near point. He surveys, sends it near half board. Scandalberry cross size, far side, a quick shot. Now one sails over the net. Salak's so able to control the rebound. Baker just out of the box as the Thunderbirds have killed off the power play. Here's Panacic, finds Salak, and he tips it wide. He gets it back, though. Salak tangled up, gets the long stick, able to tap it. It's still loose, as now picking up behind the net. It's Johnson. Johnson gets ran into by Panacic, but it's played off the half boards. Now here comes Tucker Scandalberry. Scandalberry gets crunched by Clay Keeley over on the far side. As now the two have a little extracurriculars. Puck comes out near side, takes a deflection, and comes back out to the neutral zone. A couple of crushing hits by Clay Keeley here this evening with 11.24 remaining in the second period. We're still scoreless here in Winston-Salem. Keeley. Plays it off the boards. He's trying to find Baker one off for a change. And now here comes Merritt. Far side. Merritt sends it near side. Telstrom a shot and they score. Thunderbirds caught in the middle of a change. The pass ended up being intercepted as Dawson Baker went off from Clay Keeley. And the turnover results in a port here on lead here with 11.09 remaining in the second period. It's Matthias Telstrom on the feed from Sam Merritt. And it'll beat Mario Cavalieri on a one-timer. And Port Huron, they lead. The Carolina Thunderbirds one to nothing here in the second period. So now Carolina will play from behind. So we await the restart. Schnapp and Chartran whacking sticks. And now the two having a chat. Face-off is won by Nate Keeley, and we're back underway. Carolina looking for a response here in the middle period. Vizita 
on the forehand. Sends it to Kennedy near side. He surveys, throws one in. That one's blocked in front by Young. Comes back out to the point and takes a hop over Kennedy's stick. He'll have to play it over to his D partner, Tucker Firth. Firth to Nate Keeley. Sends it to Petita. Will rattle one, trying to get it in deep. It ends up going off the linesman. As now it's stuck at the blue line in front of the Thunderbirds bench before it's whacked back to Tucker Firth. That goal from Telstrom, the first of the season for him. It's now Batsita holds it, sends it back. Firth, the shot, and he scores! <laughs> Tucker Firth with his second goal of the year. Left all alone, and he's able to beat Tucker at signing. And less than a minute after Port Huron takes the lead, Carolina ties it up here at 10.31. Let to go here in period number two. They just said it. When was the response going to come? And it comes almost immediately. At the 9-29 mark of the second period, it's a riddle tractor goal for Tucker Firth with the assist from John Batita. As Batita gets his second assist of the weekend, and Tucker Firth gets his second point here and has many games. Back underway, Dawson Baker will send this one in deep. Here's the approach to midway point in period number two. It's the second game this weekend between the two sides. Scandalberry tries to clear the zone. It goes high up in the air. Gus Ford will backhand this one over to the far side. Goes off the end boards. Schnapp also credited with an assist. Puck bouncing around. Ford has it at his skates. He got hit high. Hand goes up. As now here comes Telstrom. But Ford looks to be in some pain. As it's going to be a high sticking call. Scandalberry just ends up hitting Baker in the face as well with the stick. So Ford hit with a high stick. And then after the play, Scandalberry just cross-checks Dawson Baker in the face. And Baker is down, being tended to by Josh Linville and Damian Poole. Justin Bioni, Mario Cavalieri, now just trying to get his team back to the bench. But well, this one's starting to get chippy. After a pair of goals, one from either side. Now the referee is going to have to try to figure out. Baker's still down, though. Sita and Evan Foley, the two captains, chatting at the ref's crease with the two officials. It's now Baker back up to a knee. There was initial call of a high stick. It looks like that high stick is going to go against Sam Merritt, but then Scannelberry. Having a conversation with the crowd. After. He hits Baker after the play. Also heading to the penalty box is Gregory Felder. So it's been a action-packed last two minutes or so. So now it looks like there's some blood down on the ice as well. The on-ice officials and the off-ice officials trying to clear this one up.
as now Merritt and Scannelberry chatting with the fans. Maybe a little bit more than a chat. Still no official word. You got Merritt and Scannelberry in the box. And you have Gregory Felder in the box as well. And now they have seven minutes up as Merritt's out of the box, but they have seven minutes up on the scoreboard. With number 17, Tucker Scannelberry. In the penalty box. Scannelberry still chatting with the officials. And now Scannelberry is going to head to the dressing room. Much to the applause of the Thunderbirds faithful here at the Ennis. But seven minutes show up on the scoreboard, and it's Tucker Scannelberry. And it's gonna bring up an attacking zone face-off for Carolina. Five on four. Full is David Gaeta. He'll go to the penalty box. So they call it a high stick which credits two of the seven minutes, and then they call it a match penalty for high sticking against Scannelberry. So he is gone. And the Thunderbirds on an extended power play for the next seven. They've yet to score on the power play here this weekend, 0 for 6. Good chance to change that here. Last night we saw a five minute Misconduct called against Joe Kennedy. It was five minutes of five on four for Port Huron. They only got one. And now seven minutes for Carolina as a coming out of the restart. We'll redo the puck drop. Ford in for the draw. Ends up being one back to the point. Yuri Pastuka sends it far side. Baker walks in a shot. Oh, he hit the post. Comes out far side at the point. Baker, he has it at the pool line. Sends it near side. Panachik, he holds. Sends it to Ford behind the net. Ford will set up shot. Gets it right back to Panachik, who sends it right back to Gus Ford. Gets it back out at the point. Pastuka now to Ford. Ford, just trying to throw it into the slot. Takes a deflection. Comes out near side. And this will be whacked all the way back down to Cavalieri. He's out of his crease. Pastuka, he'll hold, though. So here comes Pastuka on the far side. He leaves it there, vacant point, takes it right back. Baker holding at the top of the circle, sends it to Ford. Ford surveying on the forehand, back to Baker. Back out to the point, Pastuka, Panacic. The near half boards, he waits, goes to Ford, walking in near side, brings it down the far side to Baker. Baker at the circle. Back to Ford. Ford just looking to try to find someone in front. He'll cycle back out and reset things. Comes near side. Pastuka walks in a shot and a save by Tynan as Pastuka took a big hit. Clearing attempts kept in by Ford. Ford walks in a quick shot and a blocker save by Tynan as it goes high off the boards. Baker has to cor corral it and now holds. Baker at the slide. Leaves it for Salak. His shot goes wide. Baker now again 
Surveys. Sends a far sign. Too much on it for Vestuka. She plays it off the boards and now plays it to Gus Ford, who cycles all the way back out. Ford at the hash. Searching. Back out to the point. Vestuka over to Baker. Walks in. A quick shot. Save. Rebound. Puck bouncing around. Still loose in front. Tynan's able to find it, and he's able to cover. Here with 8.02 remaining in the second period, and now Vanacic and Salak with Foley and Schumacher. Nothing's going to come of this, though, as now they have the official call on this. Tucker Scandalberry is calling for a high-sticking minor, which is being served by David Gaeta. Gregory Felder is called for a roughing minor, as well as Sam Merritt. And then the high-sticking match penalty is also being served by Gaeta. And that results in the seven-minute power play. We've reached immediate timeout. One to one, your score between Carolina and Port here on this one getting good. We're back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. My name is Melissa Pilson, and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336 451 7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up, babe? Back here in Winston-Salem, there's been a lot to uncover in this one after goals from both sides. At the 8.51 mark from San Merritt and then from Tucker further the 9.29 mark. Since then, this game has started to get chippy. It's started to get physical and it's resulted in a seven-minute power play, which is brought to you by Little Italy Pizza, an Italian restaurant. The Carolina on the power play for the next five minutes and 13 seconds. After Tucker Scannelberry is called for a high-sticking match penalty well after the play had come to an end. Now face off to the left of Tucker Tynan, and it's one. By Port Huron, but it's held behind the net before it comes back out to Matt Graham. The player coach has on the back end. He'll just send this one in for Cavalieri to go back and recollect. And he'll hold this one here for Tucker Firth. The goal scorer here tonight for Carolina. He's got two points now on the weekend, going along with his second goal of the season. Batita with some speed. He holds, brings it in behind the net. Batita circles, brings it out on the far side. Sends it into the corner. Schnapp at the far half boards. Plays it for Dominic Dumas. Comes right out in front. Just sends one wide. So it comes over to Clay Keeley. Keeley to Schnapp. Gets it right back. Out to the point. Firth thinks about a slam shot right at the flow logo. Walks in. Throws one in. Deflected. It's loose in front. Puck still tangled up just to the right of the net. Comes free. Still no one able to find it before it comes back out to the slot. A clearing attempt. And it skips back out into the neutral zone. 7.05 remaining here in the second period. We're tied at one. Carolina on the power play for the next four minutes and 12 seconds. Here's Schnapp. To Batita. Gets it right back in a one-timer at 10. Ends up being deflected over to Dumas, who picks it up. Holds at the point. Dumas into the far corner. Finds Schnapp. Schnapp searching. Back to Dumas. Dumas walks in. Plays it off the board. Schnapp will circle. There's 6.40 left to go. Schnapp a quick shot. It's deflected, and this one will be cleared by Brian Parsons as Cavalieri comes out near side to play. Both sides go off for a change here with still three minutes and 40 seconds of five on four action. Merritt as well as Gregory Felder will come out of the box at the next whistle for their roughing calls. Here's Baker, walks over the blue line, saucers one near side to Bonacic. He brings it in, sends it behind the net, forward. Back out, far dot, Baker can't control it on the first touch, he gets it right back, sends it over to Ford, Ford searching, Sends it back out to the point. Pastuka walks in. A shot and a save by Tynan with 6.03 remaining here in the second period. Felder and Merritt make their way out of the penalty boxes, but Gaeta is still in there for the next three minutes and 14 seconds. The second period brought to you by Flow Automotive. They saw it to the left of Tynan is won by Port Huron and played out on the near side to the point. Pastuka keeps it in. He holds, gets it to Ford. Ford dancing in, walks in, a shot and a save by Tynan. The net comes off its moorings. But a good look there for Gus Ford. 
And another save by Tynan, who has been good here, especially in this second period. But the Thunderbirds on this man advantage starting to get more and more chances and chip away. The shots on goal here on our Contact LLC. Shots on goal tracker, 22 to 21 in favor of the visitors. As now the net has to be put back on its moorings. Ford had a goal last night. Leads the team with 12 this season. Good for second in the FPHL, or a time for second, that is. And now trying to win another attacking zone faceoff to the left of Tucker Tynan. It's 1-0 by Merritt and played into the corner. Schumacher rattles over far side. Johnson tries to clear. Ends up to Sim, who whacks it out. And all the way back down for Mario Cavalieri to collect here with 2.54 remaining on the power play for Carolina. There's Gus Ford into the attacking zone. Ford trying to circle it. Sends this one high up in the air. Slot gets knocked off as it's back out to the point. Panacic, he holds at the blue line. Sends it over to Baker. Baker walking in. Leaves it for Ford. Ford trying to send one in front. Takes a deflection and ends up in the fourth row. So with 5.18 remaining here in the second period and two and a half to go. And the five on four is another attacking zone faceoff for Carolina. Trying to take their first lead of the evening after going down one to nothing thanks to the goal from Sam Merritt. But Sita in for the draw against Evan Foley. Sita with an assist here tonight. It's one. Back out to the point for Clay Keeley. Keeley gets poked when it comes to Dumas at the far half boards. Dumas brings it back. Behind the net to Schnapp, who tries to get it right back out before Young ends up getting a stick to it. And this one ends up being sent back out to the neutral zone by Vincent DeCumbus, or Tucker Firth. He ends up collecting, and Firth will cycle. He holds, brings it out on the far side. His pass, trying to get to Petita, deflected by Foley before Clay Keeley rattles this one in. Takes an annex hop off of a stanchion, is whacked back out to the neutral zone as Firth controls once again. Under two minutes to go here on the seven-minute power play for Carolina. Jacob Schnapp holding off a defender. Brings it out on the far side. Gets it back to the point. Firth, a quick shot in that one. Goes wide. Goes off the end boards. Right to Clay Keeley, though. A four and a half to go here in the second. We're tied at one. A quick shot save. Rebound still in the slot. It's lofted up. No one can clear it, though, as Batita able to come out of the scrum with it. He surveys at the far dot. Brings it back below the net. Circles back, throws it out in front, and a shot from Schnapp. Ends up going right through the crease, and it comes back out to the near point. Firth able to keep it in. Here with a minute 21 left to go on the power play. Dumas walks in, far side. On the back, he throws one in front, and a save by Tynan. A big opportunity once again, and Tucker Tynan is able to keep his side as John Petito is right on the doorstep. 1.13 remaining on the seven-minute power play as we reach the final media timeout of the second period. One-to-one year score between Carolina and Port Huron. We're back after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local... A 113 remaining on the power play for Carolina as they in Port Huron are tied at one. Here at the Annex on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. Carolina trying to come away with their second straight win on the weekend. Trying to be able to come away as well with their sixth straight victory here this season. They've swept each of the last two series, Columbus and, ba and uh, Blue Ridge, excuse me. But now with 1.13 remaining on the power play, Carolina trying to find something here. They've had seven minutes up on the clock. Now they're looking to do a little ice maintenance here out on the far side. Game three coming up tomorrow. 
at 4.05 p.m. between these two sides. As Okay, before 0-2 remaining here in the second period. Goals from Sam Merritt and Tucker Firth. That was where we are. And then after that, it was Tucker Scandalberry not being handed a match penalty for a high stick. So David Gaeta, he's been in the penalty box for quite some time. And now Ford and Merritt in for the draw. A tie up on the draw. It's lost with the line judge before it's played back behind the net. Salak. Sends it out far side. Here's Panacek at the blue line. Takes a hop over his stick. And now Panacek just able to whack it out near side of Bastuka as Merritt was charging in on it. Here's Ford. He'll rattle it all around the boards. Takes a weird hop. Comes out on the back of the cage and is lifted back out to the neutral zone. Cavalieri. He holds. There were 335 remaining in the second. Carolina and Port Huron. Tied at one. Here's Gus Ford. Brings it across, trying to dance in. Ford walks in, a quick shot. Oh, he hit the post. Baker, able to get to it first. Sends it back into Ford, almost had a second of the weekend. Sends it near side, Pastuka. Whiffs on the pass, out to Bonacic. Gets it right back though, Pastuka spins, sends it far side. Bonacic, he holds, sends it down to Baker. Right back to Pastuka, top of the slot, a shot, he scores! <laughs> Larry Pastuka with the second of the weekend, able to snap one. High blocker side over Tucker Tynan. And with 20 seconds remaining on the five on four, Carolina, they take their first lead of the night here with 3.09 remaining in the second. So Carolina, after six minutes and 40 seconds on the power play, are finally able to get one. Back to five on five action now. Support here on looking for a response. Here comes Matthias Telstrom up the near side. Telstrom sends it, gets it right back from Dalton J. Let's play back out and high off of the boards for its whack back out. At the blue line, J able to come away with it. Ends up being dispossessed though by James Farmer. Farmer. Plays it up and into the bench. For that goal from Yuri Pasuka, brought to you by Riddle Tractor, as all goals are this season. But Carolina, 2-1 to one lead. With 2.38 remaining in period number two. So Pasuka now... With his fourth goal of the year. They give an assist to Peter Benachik as well as he gets his 150th assist in his FPHL career. On the near side, Schnapp sends this one back out into the neutral zone. This one's going to go all the way down, though, and this will go for icing. Here with 2.22 remaining in the second period. So Carolina now trying to keep this advantage and try to get to the third period with a lead. Keeley and Meriden for the draw. Ends up going off the referee. Coming away with it is James Farmer. Backhands it back out. Johnson keeps it in and rattles it all the way out to the far corner. Telstrom's going to be the first one to it. Tries to play it in deep. Kennedy is able to keep it, though, before it bounces around. Schnapp applies a hit as Kennedy just trying to clear the zone. That was right past Telstrom. Kennedy now. Gets his pocket picked. Telstrom throws it off the skate of Dalton J before it ends up being played behind the corner by Farmer, who finds Nate Keeley. Takes the hit as this one's kept in. Oh, a shot from the point from it. Young goes off the post. Rang the crossbar, and that keeps us a 2-1 game here at the minute 45 remaining in the second period. This one comes all the way back to James Farmer. He holds in his own zone. Farmer, stretch pass, trying to get it to Panacic. Goes off the stick of Johnson, who has Panacic coming in with him. Panacic able to run him off. Salak will just get a deflection, put it in on net. And Tynan's able to cover here with 89 seconds remaining here in the second period. So 
Yuri Pastuka, the 16-51 mark on the power play with assists from Dawson Baker and Peter Benacic. Have Carolina in front. Pastuka lined up at the top of the circles, gets it right off the draw shot, and now it takes a deflection high. Comes out on the far side. Puck bounces around. Salak able to take it into the corner. Salak pirouettes, leaves it. For Pastuka, trying to throw it in front. Doesn't get all the way there. Salak, though, able to collect. Throws it back to Pastuka. He plays it on the back end. It's brought back out to the point. Clay Keely, a quick shot. That one goes into the corner. Felder stepping up on the forward check, going up against Decumbus. As now it's tangled up. Felder still up there as it comes to Salak. Salak, far dot, walks in the slot. A shot saved by Tynan. Rebound controlled by Tristan Sim. Here with 55 seconds remaining in period number two. Salak across the blue line. Has it on the back end. Salak into the corner. It's ran into a couple of white sweaters. 43 seconds to go in the second period. Schumacher just trying to shovel this one back out. Pastuka is able to keep it in. Send it right back to Schumacher. In the corner, it's brought back out to Jan Salak. Salak whacks this one, but it comes back. And Schumacher controls here with 25 seconds left to go in the second period. Three goals in this second period. Two for the Thunderbirds, who had the lead. Kennedy and Picard at the red line with Salak joining. It's whacked over to Panacic. Panacic dances around here side, throws it for Salak. That one ends up behind him. Here comes Graham with 10 seconds left to go here in the second period. Graham gets around Kennedy. Graham near side, trying to back one in. Firth is able to intercept, and it goes out to the far corner with two seconds and one, and that is how. Period number two comes to an end. Now Firth drops the gloves with Graham. Firth throwing some punches there on the far side. Is now another tie-up. In the far corner, got more fist that comes going. It's Kennedy going against Alec Johnson. And Kennedy with right hooks is just able to drop him. After the whistle, Joe Kennedy. Dropping the gloves after Tucker Firth and Matt Graham did as well. Peter Panacic, he's being escorted. Matt Grimm having conversations. It's all coming at the end of the second. Alex Johnson ended up just losing the, the fight. Now making his way. But we're through 40 here in Winston-Salem. Carolina, a two to one lead, and we will have some infractions to clear up as the intermission continues but Joe Kennedy Tucker Firth Matt Graham and Alice Johnson all dropping the gloves Kennedy winning his fight pretty convincingly with the right hooks but we're through 40 minutes in Winston-Salem Carolina after giving up a goal able to take the lead with two unanswered we reach the second intermission Carolina two poor here on one we're back to Winston-Salem for the second intermission report after this this is Thunderbirds Hockey Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Sales. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right. 
just like Huey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 Hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Back here in Winston-Salem, we've reached the second intermission of a action-packed second period after Carolina is able to take a 2-1 to lead after the middle period. But now at the end, there's more to be determined after a pair of fights at the end of the period. And there's even more as that second period went on. But Carolina, 2-1 to one lead over the Port Huron Prowlers. And this is how we got there. In the second period, it was Matthias Telstrom with assist from Sam Merritt and Dalton J at the 8.51 mark of the second period. That ended up giving Port Huron a one to nothing lead over the Thunderbirds. It was a one-timer after a turnover. Mario Cavalieri didn't have much of a chance. But then... Less than 50 seconds later, it was Tucker Firth with his second goal of the year with assist from John Batita and Jacob Schnapp that tied us up at one after the Thunderbirds were able to force a turnover and Firth was able to walk into the slot and snap one home. It tied us up at one and then extracurriculars started to come in and it started and really ended with Tucker Scannelberry. He was originally called for a high sticking call which was a two minute minor and then after the play he ends up hitting Tucker Firth well after the play and well after the whistle and that ended up resulting in a match penalty for Tucker Scannelberry as the Thunderbirds went to a seven minute power play. Also at that 10-11 mark, it resulted in a pair of roughing, offsetting roughing calls between Gregory Felder and Sam Merritt. So after Scannelberry was called for the minor as well as the match penalty, the Thunderbirds went to the power play for seven minutes and it took six minutes and 40 seconds of that five on four to be able to take the lead. And it was from Yuri Pestuka with assist from Dawson Baker and Peter Manachik that gave Carolina the two to one advantage. Carolina takes that two to one lead into the third period. But at the end of the third, Tucker Firth, Joe Kennedy, as well as Matt Graham and Alex Johnson. They ended up driving the gloves at the same time over in the corner, right by the entrance to the Thunderbirds dressing room. So we saw last night there was, we saw last night that there was fisticuffs, Justin Bioni and Dan Chartrand tonight. It continues to roll on here in Winston-Salem. It's only the second game here this weekend though. We still got one more coming up tomorrow at 4.05 p.m. here live from the Annex. But at the second intermission here this evening, Carolina leads the Port Huron Prowlers by a score of two to one as Carolina tries to get its sixth straight victory and its fifth straight against Port Huron. That dates back all the way to last season and the regular season. Carolina, they didn't win in regulation last year against this Port Huron Prowlers team. But this, this year, they get the three points last night and now trying to come away with another three points here tonight and a big one here between Port Huron and Carolina. But so an action-packed second period and more to come here in the second intermission report. It's the Thunderbirds two and the Prowlers one. Back to the Annex after this. This is Thunderbirds hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker. One with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. 
For over 85 years, Muston and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Back here at the second intermission, Carolina leading Port Huron by a score of two to one after Goals in this second period from Tucker Firth and Yuri Pastuka. Pastuka again his second of the weekend after he had one last night and ended up giving the Thunderbirds the uh, two to one lead. Tucker Firth getting his second point here this evening. And that goal for him also the 10th of his FBHL career as well for Tucker Firth, the St. Thomas, Ontario native. But Carolina a two to one lead after the first 40 minutes of action here tonight. And we take a look around the rest of the FBHL here this evening. First starting up in Withville at the Apex Center, one that Thunderbirds fans should be watch or should be keeping track of as Carolina trailing Columbus by two points heading in to tonight's action around the FBHL. And right now, after the first 20 minutes of action there at the first intermission there at the Apex Center, Columbus with a in Blue Ridge tied at one between the two sides in that first period is Dominic Matonic with a goal to give Blue Ridge an early lead and then Justin McDonald was able to tie it up at one which is 20 seconds remaining in that period. Looking elsewhere around the rest of the FPHL we head to the Empire Division. That's ahead to the first intermission up in Danbury at the Danbury Arena. Quick start for both sides as Danbury and Motor City are tied at two up at the Danbury Arena. They went to overtime last night. Jonathan Giuliano Got the scoring started while Brad Ryder doubled the lead for Motor City 2 to nothing. And then Johnny Ruiz and Brandon Stoyshevsky ended up being able to tie it up. And Stoyshevsky tied it up at the 13.45 mark of period number two. So 2-2 two to two at the end of the first period in Danbury. See Danbury and Motor City. One game just about a minute. Or rather the first period starting to wind to a close there. And in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mississippi and Baton Rouge scoreless in the first period. After last night's game, nothing quite yet there. And now one other game going on in that PHL this evening. It's the Elmira River Sharks and the Watertown Wolves and a good one there. Just underway in the third period, about two and a half minutes in. Watertown and Elmira are tied at four in that one. Elmira ended up scoring first and three unanswered from Watertown before Elmira was able to make it a 3-2 game. Watertown built the lead back to two a 602 at the 602 mark of that second period and then it was Elmira being able to tie it up over the final five minutes of the second period and so they're just underway from the first arena in the third period four to four between Elmira and Watertown but ours right here at the annex it's Carolina with a two to one advantage over the Port Huron Prowlers as now we have some more coming down the line from that, the scrum at the end of that second period. So we already said that Tucker Firth and Joe Kennedy were called for fighting majors, as well as Alex Johnson and Matt Graham. But now, a couple of game misconducts as well. Joe Kennedy and Alex Johnson both get game misconducts for fighting after the original altercation. So Joe Kennedy out for the second night in a row. That will be the second Prowler that's also been kicked out of this game. So we'll have to see who comes out and 
We'll have to see what it looks like in the third period, but right now, after everything in that second period, Tuckles, Tucker Scandalberry, he has been he has been awarded a match penalty, while Joe Kennedy and Alex Johnson have been awarded game misconduct. Tucker Firth and Matt Grams are just considered fighting majors, while also Kennedy and Johnson got fighting majors. But so Firth and Graham, for right now at least, are staying in the game. But Joe Kennedy and Alex Johnson both to the dressing room. So that's how things shook out from the end of the second period in which Carolina has a 2-1 to one lead over the port here on Prowlers. A 9.20 left to go here in the second intermission. We'll take a timeout and come back to reset things for the start of the third period. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 Hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns, right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day, and go Birds. Hi, I'm Wake Wake. Second intermission rolls along with Carolina leading the port here on Prowlers by a score of 2-1. to one. Still one more game coming up this weekend, and that's tomorrow here at the Annex. Game 3 between Carolina and Port Huron here from the Annex. A 4.05 p.m. puck drop on Faith in Action Day here in Winston-Salem. Also, don't forget, coming up on Tuesday will be another edition of the Coach Harry Show live from Earl's. Join me, the head coach, Steve Harrison, as well as a special player guest. So we'll chat for an hour here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Last week, we had Mario Cavalieri on. We've had Gus Ford as well as John Petita. They have been the first three to come join the show this week, and we'll figure out who will be the newest player to join the show here coming up on Tuesday evening. Carolina, a 2-1 to one advantage over the Port Huron Prowlers after the first 40 minutes of action. Last weekend against Columbus, Carolina did not lead until they won in both, or rather they led in the first period in game two, but they did not lead at all in game one until they won in the shootout. In game two, they were able to hold a one nothing lead, but they trailed and ended up going into the third period last Saturday night. But now, taking a look here this evening, Carolina, they led 2 to nothing last night at the end of the second period. Tonight, they only lead 2-1 to one after Port Huron got on the, on the score sheet first. And last night, it was Brandon Picard, 38 seconds into the, extra, er, er, into the third period. He was able to beat Mario Cavalier. That made it a 2-1 game. So now, in this third period, what will, what will Carolina have to do here against Port Huron with now a couple of guys going to be in the box or even out of this game after, if you're just joining us, the altercation at the end of the second period after Tucker Firth and Matt Graham, they had a five-minute major for fighting as the two of them went right after the whistle sounded. Joe Kennedy and Alex Johnson were called for five-minute majors for fighting, but also Joe Kennedy 
and Alex Johnson have been handed game misconducts for fighting after the original altercation. So already have a couple in the box. Firth and John and Graham will start in the box on the major calls, but then Kennedy and Johnson or Kennedy and or Joe Kennedy and Alex Johnson, beg your pardon, uh, both out of this one. So is a chippy in physical second period. That saw now three people be ejected after Tucker Scannelberry ended up being given a match penalty for a high stick. That was well after the whistle. Joe Kennedy dropping the gloves with Alex Johnson. Those two now out here tonight. But it should be a fun third period coming up here in Winston-Salem. Thunderbirds leading the port here on Prowlers by a score of 2-1 to one, thanks to a pair of goals from Tucker Firth and Yeri Pastuka. 2-1, to one, Carolina the advantage as we approach the start of the third period. Wonder how this one will continue to play out after everything in that middle period. We'll have to see as this one continues. We're back with the start of the third period. After this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud support of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds! Hi, I'm Stuart with Pitland Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in cans at the games or come down and see us We're here in downtown Winston-Salem. Go Birds! Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogstillstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Welcome back to the Annex here in Winston-Salem. Third period just about set to get underway here between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Port Huron Prowlers. After a pretty quiet first 20 minutes, the second period really started to escalate. As three goals are scored, two in favor of the Thunderbirds, who lead two to one. We saw multiple misconducts, rather a match penalty, two game misconducts. And so now we'll have to see how this third period will shape up. Carolina here at home trying to stay perfect this season. The Thunderbirds 4-0 to start off play here at the Annex. They've come in as winners of five straight. They've won four in a row against Port Huron. And now trying to extend all of that here tonight. Port Huron took the lead with a goal from Matthias Telstrom at the 8.51 mark of that second period. And then it was Tucker Firth with an assist from John Batita and Jacob Schnapp at the 9.29 mark to tie it up. And Yuri Pasuka with assist from Dawson Baker and Peter Vanacic ended up giving Carolina the 2-1 lead. With that assist, Peter Vanacic ends up being able to pick up his 150th assist of his FPHL career. Big congratulations to Peter on the milestone. A lot of milestones here recently for the Thunderbirds. Gus Ford, 100 goals last week. Saw Dawson Baker get 100, a night, or 100 points in his career a night ago. Now Peter Vanacic ended up getting his 150th assist there in his career. So Tucker Firth will be in the penalty box after the five minute major for fighting. 
as well as Matt Graham should be joining him. As now Graham makes his way over to the penalty box. And remember that Joe Kennedy and Alex Johnson have both been served game misconducts. So the Thunderbirds now down two defensemen. While Port Huron down two forwards at the moment with Graham in the box as well as Tucker Scannelberry ended up being given a match penalty earlier on in that second period. We are starting for the set for the start of the third and we're underway here in Winston-Salem. Two to one Carolina leads after the first 40 minutes trying to close this one out here on home ice. It starts in the attacking zone. Gus Ford tangled up at the blue line. It comes back out to the neutral zone. And it's played out on the far side. Here's Matthias Telstrom, the goal scorer tonight for the Prowlers. Tries to play it on the man. Ends up going and being stuck at the red line. It's sent all the way in on the far side. It's held and sent all the way back out towards the penalty boxes where Nate Keeley gets ran into. Rather, Clay Keeley. It's Dominic Dumas. Walks in a quick shot and a save by Tynan. And he freezes just 31 seconds in to this third period. Third period, as always, this season is brought to you by Mustin and Crutchfield. Faceoff will now come to the right of Tucker Tynan. You're here tonight has saved 25 shots on 27 attempts. Mario Cavallari, 21 of 22 here this evening. Faceoff to the right of Vanacek. Rather of Tynan, Vanacek in for the draw. It's tied up, one back to Salak. Salak playing it on the backhand. We'll send it right back to the centerman. Finds Pastuka, already a goal tonight. He's got two this weekend. His shot was blocked. It's played by Gaeta. He has to circle back. He holds in front of his net. Now backhands it back out. Pastuka gets a whack to it at the blue line. Gaeta trying to finish off the, off the press. And it's sent back to Braden Deck, who gets it right back from Brian Parsons. Played up into the attacking zone with James Farmer back to collect for the Thunderbirds. Behind Mario Cavalieri. He plays it far side to Pastuka. Sharp pass to Salak. Who walks into the zone. Salak on the backhand throws one across. No one home knows. Bonacic got tied up. Throws a man into the boards. He gets thrown down at the same time by Parsons. Official right there though. No call. Batita takes a deflection. Comes over to Bioni. Bioni holds. Throws one intentionally wide on the far side. Comes out of the far half boards. It's Felder. Backhands this one in for Salak. Salak in the corner. Tied up with Parsons once again. Is now man gets dropped behind the net. Salak still holding though. And now a hand goes up here on the near side. Salak lost his stick. And it looks like this is going to go against Carolina. Salak looks like he's going to be called for holding the stick. So Port Huron is going to be heading to the power play. Here with 18.25 remaining in the third period. Two to one, Carolina in front. And the penalty kill starts with James Former, clearing it all the way down to Tucker Tynan, who holds. And it is two minutes for holding the stick. So here comes Port Huron on the attack, on the near side. It's Merritt, drops it back. To Cumbus, he holds at the near dot. Gets down low to Merritt. Brings it back out, top of the dot. Jay, back to the point. To Cumbus at the blue line, sends it over far side to Evan Foley. Back out to the point, comes near side to Dalton Jay. Jay at the top of the circles. He's looking, doesn't see anything, and will send it down into the corner. Brandon Picard gets ran into and pinned against the boards by Clay Keeley. Those two get their sticks tied up before it comes back out to the Cumbus. To Cumbus. Back down low at the goal line. It's thrown out in front. Comes back out to Cumbus. Quickly to Jay. Looking. No one there. Schnapp is able to get over. A quick shot. It's blocked by Schnapp. It's caught. Ends up being caught up in his gear. And it comes back out to the neutral zone as the Thunderbirds clear here with a minute remaining on the penalty kill. Picard walks in. A quick shot and a blocker save by Cavalieri. Puck bounces back out in front of the net. Takes a deflection. And Cavalieri is able to glove it here at 17-16 remaining in the third period. Picard walked into the same spot that he ended up picking up his seventh goal of the year last night and tried to do the same thing against Mario Cavalieri. Last night it was the blocker's side that Picard was able to beat and made it 2-1 to one just 38 seconds into the third period. But this time Cavalieri was expecting it. Was able to get the blocker there. Reactionary save 
from the Ontario native. Face off is one. Bioni from behind his own net trying to clear. It hits a prowler as now Gaeta backhands this one in. It's caught by Shardstrand who plays it back out to Telstrom. To the point. Schumacher. Far side. A quick shot. Saved by Cavalier. He got the stick there, but it's still loose behind the net. It's kicked over far side. Here's Sim. Gets ran into the boards. And it's sent out near side. Gaeta trying to throw it in on it. It gets blocked. Bioni whacks this one high in the air. Telstrom kicks it back in deep. Here are 20 seconds remaining on the two-minute minor against Jan Salak for holding the stick. Behind the net, trying to throw it back out in front. It's intercepted by Gus Ford. He's able to clear it into the neutral zone. Telstrom, he holds Salak with eight seconds remaining on the two-minute minor. Batita able to take a bouncing puck. Walks into the zone. Batita and the back end in the corner. Here comes Salak out of the penalty box. Carolina kills off another penalty here this weekend. Telstrom. Back to five on five action, trying to dump one in. Keeley just catches that out of the air. Gloves holds it, and now he's trying to get a stretch pass. This Port Huron was in the middle of a change, and it's back to Former. Former out to the red line. Manachik zips it over far side. Salak walks in, a shot, and a save by Tynan as he ends up getting that one up near the neck, and he covers. Here is 16.02 remaining in the third period. So after that second period, these two sides trying to let the hockey play, the hockey go a little bit more. And the faceoff now to the left of Tucker Tynan. He's in for the draw, or it's one by Sam Merritt and one behind the net. Ryan Parsons plays it up. It's knocked around and comes right back towards him in the corner, going up against Banachik. Banachik tangles him up. It's kicked over far side. Picard just whacks it. This one, Pastuco will bring it back and play it in the neutral zone, and that's going to be an offside as Farmer wasn't back before he touched the puck. So 15.44 to go here in the third period. Carolina the two to one lead. Be a big three points here tonight if Carolina can get the win in regulation. Face off in front of the Port Huron bench. And it's won by Carolina. Quick pass from Baker, a little too much on it for Clay Keeley. He has to retreat. He holds, angles it off the boards to James Foreman. Quick touch pass, and now here comes Gus Ford from Baker. Ford walks in, trying to dance around and get caught up in the skates of Braden Deck, and has played out to a vacant point on the far side in front of the Port Huron bench. Baker will just send this one back into the zone as Port Huron goes to recollect. Here are 15-20 remaining in the third period. Carolina a 2-1 lead after the 4-1 victory last night. There are unanswered goals coming from Tucker Firth and Yuri Pasuka, both with a pair of points on the weekend. That goal for Tucker Firth ended up being his 10th of his FBHL career. Dawson Baker holding behind his net. Sends it over to Gregory Felder. Felder at the red line. will send this one in on Tynan, who plays it. And he thought about covering. Instead, he leaves it for Merritt. Merritt up the far side. And now here comes Port Huron. It's Jay across the blue line. Trying to flow one in. Telstrom got a skate to it. Comes in on Cavalieri, and he covers. With 14.44 remaining here in the third period, and he makes his way quickly over to the bench. And Sucker Firth and Matt Graham make their way out of the penalty boxes for serving their five-minute majors. 14.44 remains here in the third period. Carolina, 2-1 to one lead. We're back after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comptech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Two to one, Carolina, the advantage here over the Port Huron Prowlers with 14.41 remaining here in the third period. Carolina's already killed off a penalty here in this third period, which is brought to you by Mustin and Crutchfield. Carolina trying to come away with its sixth straight victory. Chance to also pick up their fifth straight win over Port Huron as well, dating back to last season. Steve Harrison in his career. It's 2011-3 against Port Huron, dating back to his Danville Dasher days a season ago. Coming out of the ensuing media timeout, there'll be a face-off to the right of Mario Cavalieri after he had to freeze. So 14:44 shows on the game clock here at the Annex. 
Good crowd on a Saturday night and a tie up on the face off. Manatcher tries to whack at it, but Telstrom comes away with it. Saucers one near side. Here's Dalton Young, a quick shot and a glove save by Cavalieri. He's able to freeze. Felder now and Merritt. A couple of pushing and shoving after the timeout. Rather after their Cavalieri cover. So 14.35 remaining. Port here on, not going away though. Saw them get one in the third last night. Carolina trying to find an insurance goal. Face off is won by Banachik to the left of Cavalieri. Felder ends up misplaying as now it's whacked up. Sim able to knock it down. He has it on the back end. Throws one out in front dangerously. Comes all the way back out to the point. Young misplays it as now Pasuka. Here comes Pasuka. Walk it in. Oh, whoa, Pasuka. Oh, ends up going wide. Man goes flying into the net. The net goes off its moorings. As Pasuka, after the turnover by Young, had the chance. But he wasn't able to get back to it as he tried to go to the back end after getting tiny going one way. But it'll bring up an attacking zone face-off for the Thunderbirds. Oh, a good opportunity there coming right out of that draw. Trying to get the insurance goal. Now well, a big draw here. Got some momentum. Try to keep this pressure up. The face off to the right of Tyner. It's been good here tonight. You saved 28 out of 30 shots. Nate Keeley wins the draw back out to the point. Farmer thought about it. Now we'll carry it and send it back down. Nate Keeley sends it back out. Stop in front of us. Save by Tynan. Tynan not afraid to come out of his crease. And what that does ends up cutting off the angle. He makes another big save. Been a couple chances like that tonight for Carolina with Hawks coming free in the slot. Or good looks there. Tynan's been able to see, be able to smother most of them though. Face off. It's one to Schnapp. Ends up getting tied up at the skates. Braden Deck will just rattle it down as Schnapp's able to finish off the hit. In the near corner, Farmer with two white sweaters converging on him. Turns it over near side. A quick shot and a save by Cavalieri as Chartrand was bearing in. Here comes Vitito up the far side. Vitito. Brings it over into the far corner. Behind the net. A rattle this one. This takes a deflection. Ends up going out of play here with 13.44 remaining in the third period. So another attacking zone faceoff. So he's starting to get late in a Saturday night at the Annex. Nothing yet here in this second, in this third period. Gus Ford in for the draw to the right of Tynan. He wins it to Baker, plays it off his skate. Now gets it over to Bioni. Bioni ran into by Jay. So now it's loose into the corner. Dumas will leave it as Deck controls behind the net. He's got Ford on him though. He just whacks it out onto the far side. Played on the forehand. Now back in to Baker. Absorbs the hit. Trying to keep it in the zone before it pokes free. Back out on the near side. Bioni plays it off the boards. Rattled in by Dumas. Dumas holding. Will leave it. Ford. On the forehand, circles back out to the point. Bioni will just send this one behind the net. It's played, thrown out in front, a shot save. Puck still loose though. Firth controls, he holds. Back out to the point. At the top of the zone, he goes to Ford. Far half forwards, a quick shot and a save by Tynan with 13.03 to go here in the third. And Carolina getting some good chances here. Saw Dumas, he saw Baker, he saw Ford all involved. Trying to find one here and try to be able to extend this lead and keep this win streak going and get to 10 wins here and only 12 tries. Both those losses coming on the road. One was against Danbury back in the second game of the season with the other one coming against Binghamton on a Saturday night in upstate New York. That was the last time the Thunderbirds have been in the lost call. Suing faceoff, Salak in the slot, puck bouncing around, Pastuka backhands it near side. Farmer down to the half boards, into the corner, trying to throw one in front, comes back to Salak. Salak back into the point, Pastuka winds, sends a far side Farmer one time, he didn't get all of it. And it's sent back out of play, hand is up. Come on, 
As the net comes off its moorings again. Not sure that time if Tynan was just trying to push you off from post to post. But the net comes off again. It looks to be all right now. At 12.45 remaining, we have a lot of stoppages here in this third period. And another attacking zone faceoff. Panacek ends up losing it though this time to Vincent Decumbus and it's played by Schumacher. And this one goes up a couple rows into the stands. Off a deflection and so we'll get set to do it again. And a lot of stop and go action. <laughs> Only five seconds running off the clock. Check line's still out there with James Farmer and Gregory Felder. Patrick does his patented spin. Ends up losing it though this time to Matt Graham, but Jan Salak's the first one to it in the corner. Salak trying to spin away from Schumacher. Has it on the backhand, shovels it over to Vestuka, trying to throw it back down in front, trying to get back to Salak, but it's taken away. Now here it comes. Port here on three on two. They just backhand it. Gaeta over to Graham is now it's played deep into the zone. Puck bouncing around at the far dot before it's lifted all the way back out to center ice. Carolina will get off for a change. It's back to collect is Young. Carolina gets their change. It's Young still with it on his stick. Gets it right back after it took a poke. Off the far side, going against Clay Keeley. He's able to angle him off. Comes out near side though. Searching. He's just trying to throw it into the slot. Pokes free. Far side. Clay Keeley. Across the red line to the outside. Keeley backhands one in front. And that one ends up not getting all the way through. And his twin brother, Nate, coming with him. Now it comes back out near side. Here's Nate Keeley. Backhands it to Firth. Walking in near half board. Circles back out. Firth gets it to Batita. Surveys. Cross ice pass. Clay Keeley throws one. That one got hit by Schnapp. He collects. Leaves it for Nate Keeley. Nate Keeley. With 11.24 remaining in the third. Puck bouncing around. It's back again to the point. Firth to Schnapp. Thunderbirds have had a lot of time in the zone here in this third. Nate Keeley ran into the boards by Deck. Petita throws one in front trying to find Schnapp. Ends up going harmlessly wide. Schnapp just throws one back in. It's kicked away. Petita gets the rebound though. Far corner holding back out to the high slot. Nate Keeley had a goal last night. Walking in. Brings it back. Leaves it for Batita. Back out to the point. Clay Keeley back to Batita. Long time out there in the zone for Port Huron as now they go off for a change as it comes back out. And it's Tucker Firth. He collects. Plays it off the boards to the outside for Batita. Batita makes a man miss. Sends it far side. Dawson Baker with Ford just off the bench. Baker surveying. Looks for Ford. Gets it right back to Baker. Baker. Now on the near side. Sends it back out to the point. Farmer's able to control. Throwing in. It's gloved by Tynan. And he covers with 10.34 remaining here in the third period. A long time in the attacking zone there for Carolina. But nothing resulting quite yet. They are now at shooting for here on 36 to 26 in our contact LLC shots on goal tracker. It'll be a face off between Gus Ford and Sam Merritt to the left of Tucker Tynan who's still a few feet out of his crease. Not much for Mario Cavalieri here in this third period quite yet as now Baker getting tied up man down on the ice off the ensuing face off. Ryan Parsons looks like he was kneeling over the puck. Dumas will just throw it in as Merritt trying to apply a big hit on Dumas. Comes out near side. Dumas behind the net. He holds. Gets thrown off. Comes back out to the point. Bioni has to retreat now. It's played far side by for my Telus Telstra. He gets ran into it's left. Oh, quick centering pass, and that one goes into the corner. Good luck there for Dalton J, who now controls far corner. Gets it back out to the point. Deck. A quick shot. Deflected and a save by Cavalieri. He had Merritt right on the doorstep and got the deflection, but Cavalieri able to make the save. Keeps it a 2-1 game here at 9.50 remaining in the third. Carolina and Port Huron in a good one. And a Saturday at the Annex. Dumas, a turnover, a hand goes up. And the Thunderbirds are going to be heading back to the power play with 9.41 remaining here in the third period. It's going to be Sam Merritt going off for two minutes for tripping. And it'll be a little Italy pizza and Italian restaurant power play when we come back. Carolina leading 2-1 to one over Port Huron. Back after this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Saft, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor. 
and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Carolina back to the power play after Sam Merritt calling for two minutes for tripping. And so the Thunderbirds, who have had a majority of the pressure in this third period, nothing to show for it quite yet, though. Now a chance to try to be able to extend their lead, leading 2-1 to one over the Port Huron Prowlers. All three goals in this one coming in the second period. And so now Carolina to the power play, but they are... They were on the power play for seven minutes of that second period, and it took 6.40 of that seven minutes on the power play to be able to come away with the goal. The faceoff is one into the corner. As Ford plays the back as with the point, Yuri Pastuka has two goals this week and a quick shot. Now it's Waffle boarded away near side. Baker, he holds at the half board, sends it back out to the point. Pastuka thinks about it, said things better, goes far side to a Vanacic. Vanacic holding, whiffs on the initial pass attempt. Now gets it down to Ford. Ford comes right out in front. Throwing in a puck bouncing around. It comes out on the near side. Tynan got a stick there. And it's brought back out to Bastuka. He deeks. Sends it to Baker. Who finds Ford. Ford walking in right in front. Ford trying to go short side. Saved by Tynan. And this one's cleared by Young all the way down. Gus Ford trying to take over right now. Two good looks for the reigning FBHL MVP. He's got 12 goals this season. Here in the first rush of this power play. But the far side, Pastuka on the backhand, sends it back out to the point. Banachik at the blue line, gets right back to Pastuka. Ends up being ran into by Jay. Wax it back in, Salak holds to the right of the net. Holds, waits, gets it back out. Banachik walks in, a shot. And a stoppage. with 8.32 remaining here in the third period. 51 seconds remaining on the tripping call against Sam Merritt. But it's an attacking zone faceoff for Carolina to the left of Tucker Tynan. Faceoff, it's either tied up, stop a quick shot, puck cut. It's free back out to the neutral zone. It's going to be a foot race now, though, as Jay's the first one there, and he gets poke checked by Tucker Furt. It's played now on the backhand by Dominic Dumas at the red line. Batita trying to leave it for him. Puck is whacked around at the Thunderbirds logo. Matt Graham gets a stick lifted by the rookie Dumas. Dumas able to dispose of him. They're on the side. Dumas cycles this one all the way back in near side. Batita giving chase into the corner. Puck bouncing around, and now stuck up against the boards. It's played back out to the point. Furt. Cross ice, Dumas, top of the dot. Quick shot of saving it by Tynan. There was 7.57 remaining in the third. And 17 seconds remaining on the tripping call. Thunderbirds getting some good luck. Sucker Tynan, he's been good here tonight. On the other side, Mario Cavalieri, he has not had much to do here in this third period. He has been good once again here tonight. Save 26 of 27, the one goal. Not much of a chance. After a turnover and a one-timer. So big draw here. It's been all Thunderbirds in this third period. They haven't been able to score yet, though. This one's sent all the way down. You have 12 seconds remaining on the Little Italy power play. It's left for Tucker Firth by Cavalieri. He'll bring it out. You have three seconds, two, and one. Merritt out of the penalty box, back to five on five. Clay Keeley spins back in the corner. One up against the Cumbus. Couple of guys battling around the boards as the Let's Go Thunderbirds chant breaks out here at the Annex. Carolina trying to close out this victory here tonight and take the series here against Port Huron with one more coming up tomorrow. Five guys now up against the boards. 
and it's still stuck. And it comes free. It comes back out to the point. Firth walks over. The delayed penalty is called. Cavaliers on the bench. A quick shot. That one's blocked. Baker gets a right back. Extra man is out. As Carolina will head back to the power play. The official back at center ice with his hand up. It's played out far side. Banachik. He holds. Gets a back out to Firth. Walks the blue line. Sends it near side. Baker walks in. A one on one. And it's saved by Tynan. Tried to beat him five hole. And it's finally touched. And so Carolina. We'll head it back to the power play. It's now Merritt and Salak conversation. Call is made by the official back behind the play. And it looks like it's going to be Frank Schumacher. So Schumacher to the penalty box and Steve Harrison with pretty much his power play out there for the past three, three and a half minutes is going to use a timeout to buy his team some time. So Carolina leads two to one over the port here on Prowlers. Just around. Just under seven minutes left to go. The call is a cross check against Schumacher. So Carolina back to another little Italy power play. So Schumacher in the box now. Carolina just finds some time. They've had good looks on the power play here tonight. They only have one power play goal this weekend though. And that was at the tail end of a seven minute power play. In that second period, after Tucker Scandalberry was calling for a high-sticking minor, as well as a high a high cross-checking is now the new official rule, but that was a match penalty. And it took six minutes and 40 seconds for Carolina to be able to come away with a goal. But so now Schumacher in the box. Port Huron playing down two men, Joe Kennedy. He was given a game misconduct at the end of the second period. Face-off is won by Gus Ford. Back underway. Pastuka at the blue line. Sends it far side. Manachik rattles it in. Ford walks in near side. Just throws one in. Weird angle shot. And that one goes off the side of the cage. It's clearing attempt. Goes off of Panachik, who tries to get it back into Ford. Ford on the forehand. Plays it. Back out to Panachik. With the forehand Ford. Gets it back out to the point. Pastuka, a quick shot. Save. Rebound comes out near side. Baker serves. Looks. Finds Ford. Trying to dance out in front. Puck bouncing around. And it's up behind the net and goes out far side is now the netminder. Tynan, mask comes off. Steve Harrison wants an explanation now. It's like Tynan threw out the mask. Here are 30 seconds gone on the two minute minor for cross checking against Frank Schumacher. Carolina and Port Huron one more time tomorrow at 4.05 p.m. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. You don't have them already for Faith and Action Night. And then on Tuesday, the Coach Harry Show live from Earl's starting at 7 p.m. For the majority of this third period, Pucky has been in the attack zone for Carolina. Still not nothing to show for it quite yet. Pastuka off the faceoff win by Ford. Sends it over to Panacek who gets it down to Ford. Ford behind the net holds. Tries to filter one. Played out near his side. Now the net is off its moorings once again. And you can hear. Frustration from the fans. And multiple times now that the Nets come off, it's moorings. Now it's 6.03 remaining here in the third, but the Thunderbirds still in the power play. Another stoppage. 116 still remains. They're in the power play for Carolina. So 
So the faceoff to get back underway. To the right, I'm tying it. It's one by four. Back out to Banachik. Old sends it Baker, cross size Pastuka. Pastuka walks in, leaves it back at the top of the zone. Gets it right back from Banachik. Banachik walking in, gets it back. Baker near side of shot. Now and saved by Tynan. He got the stick there. Hawks whack back out to Banachik. With under a minute left to go on the power play. Baker searching. Sends it back out at the point. Quick pass back to Baker. Ford gets it right back. Ford search. Throws one off the stick of the netminder. And it comes back out to center ice. As the goalie ends up being able to clear himself. Quick change here. As now Ford's right back in. Ford. Trying to dance through. The come just got a stick there for Ford. Holds in the corner. Cycles it back out. Here's Baker. Baker walks in, finds Ford. Surveying near side. Ford cycles it right back to Baker. Goes cross ice by Banachik. He winds, he fires. That one goes off the skate of Evan Foley. And that one, it looked like it got him. Or there's not a lot of protection on his skate as he is laboring out there. Sticks broken in front of the net. As Panachik, he has it, he dangles, he waits. Looking, looking, trying to find, was looking at Schnapp. Schumacher about to come out of the box. Clay Keeley walks in far, not a shot. Save, puck bouncing around, comes out far corner. And they're gonna say that that was played with a high stick. So 4.43 remains here in the third period. Carolina, all the momentum, but still only lead by one. It's two to one, Carolina. The thrilling conclusion coming back when we're back. At the Annex, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Two to one, the Thunderbirds lead with 4.43 remaining in the third period. They've had all the momentum here in this third period, but have not been able to come away with some insurance. In this third period, which was brought to you by Mustard and Crutchfield, Carolina out shooting Port Huron 20 to five. I'll give credit to Tucker Tynan and Port Huron. They have been able to do enough to be able to keep this a one goal game. And now Carolina trying to close this one out. Trying to take the three points would be a big three points as well. Face off in front. Of Port Huron's bench and it's won by Port Huron. Dalton Young plays it on the near side. Comes back out, here's Gaeta into the attacking zone. Just tries to float one back in, ends up getting whacked around. Comes out far side, Matt Graham, the player coach, plays it off a skate. Cycled all the way back, four and a half boards. Schnapp whacks at it, but Young stepping up on the four check. It's ran into by James Farmer before it's played back out. Puck takes the bounce, and now here comes Batita. Batita in. Shoot, save, rebound at Tampa, and it one go. Batita trying to come away with the second breakaway goal here at home. Instead, here comes Port Huron. Quick shot, and that one goes wide. Gaeta trying to go glove side and Cavalier. Puck loose, and it's brought back out to the neutral zone. Young. Over the far side to Brian Parsons. Right back to Young. He gets it right back. Under four to go. 3.45 here in the third period. Carolina, a two to one lead. Well, there's been a thriller all night here at the Annex. Sim leaves it far side. Picard walks in a shot and it's saved by Cavalier. He got the shoulder there. Firth after the puck eventually came down, leaves it for Felder. Sends it along. Deck against Bitsita in the near corner. Firth trying to poke at it, gets ran into, rather Felder. Comes back, gets McCord, walks in, a slap shot, now and goes wide. Still not clear though, another shot is saved by Cavalieri. As Parsons just threw one in, and the netminder is able to cover, but 3.15 remaining in the third. We were at the same score, same point, around this time last night before Carolina was able to close the door and put Port Huron with Yuri Pastuka. His third goal of the year last night at the 17.33 mark made it 
three to one, and then the empty netter made it four to one. Does Carolina have another late one here to get some insurance? It starts with Dawson Baker. He plays it off the boards up the far side. Deck will give chase, backhands it at his own blue line, now walks across the red line. He'll rattle this one in as Cavalieri out from his crease, plays it on the back can over the far side. Farmer has to dance out of the way of Telstrom. Now trying to get away from Dalton J. Still pressing him, throws him into the boards. Ford there, though, to collect with 250 remaining here in the third. Parsons able to keep it in at the blue line, just sends it in cross corner. Baker trying to float one. It goes off of Merritt, though, and is played back in front of the poor here on bench as Dumas ends up sending a man, Telstrom, down. And it looks like he might be hurt. That was a dangerous space there, right by the open door of the bench for Port Huron. Comes back out to center ice though. Play still continues. Chartrand and Clay Keeley tangled up. Now they're trying to find the puck. Now it's kicked to Tucker Firth. Quick stretch pass far side. Here's Pastuka. Pastuka holds, spins here at 2.12 to go in the third. He'll cycle it in trying to find Jan Salak. Salak going up against the other six team. Ryan Parsons who's able to win the battle and play it off the boards and comes back out where Felder backhands it all the way in. Remember Carolina only playing with five defensemen right now after Joe Kennedy was giving a game misconduct as well as Alex Johnson. Tucker Scandleberry also was given a match penalty. Two guys light for Port Huron and one for Carolina. 1.43 remains here in the third. Thunderbirds at two to one lead. Puck just bouncing around right now as Schumacher, he collects. When will the netminder? Tucker trying to make his way to the bench. He's waiting, but Port Huron not able to get into the, the Thunderbirds half. Now here he comes, on his way to the bench. Extra man comes on, a quick shot is saved by Cavalieri with a 1.21 to go here in the third period. So Tynan will come back out onto the ice. For the time being, we'll probably want to see how this face-off goes. Here with 81 seconds to go in the third period. Carolina trying to pick up its sixth straight win and it's fifth in a row against Port Huron. And now a timeout will be called by Port Huron. So both teams have now used their timeouts. So there's only 81 seconds remaining here. And this has been a thrilling game all night. And physical, much like last night, and the Thunderbirds now trying to close out the victory here this evening. How we got here. It started, and we'll start in the second period. It was Matthias Telstrom with assists from Sam Merritt and Dalton Jay. At the 8.51 mark of the second, made it one to nothing in favor of the visitors, and then Carolina with two unanswered goals. One coming to even strength, the other on the power play. Tucker Firth with assists from Jacob Schnapp and John Batita. Tied us up at one at the 9.29 mark, and then on the power play, Dawson Baker and Peter Vanacic able to get Yuri Pastuka his second goal of the weekend, and his fourth on the season, give him a 2-1 lead. Scandleberry and Johnson both out of this game for Port Huron due to a match penalty, a game misconduct. Joe Kennedy also a game misconduct as well. Face off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. It's one, the net is empty. Six on five here with a minute 15 remaining in the third period. Picard will just rattle this one in. It's taken by Farmer. His shot though, it was on target. Schumacher though collects, plays it out on the far side. Schumacher, he holds behind his own net here with 60 seconds remaining in Winston-Salem. Telstrom gets it in, far side, or near side. It's played back out. It's lost and sent back out into the neutral zone. Schumacher collects, plays it far side. Picard trying to throw it in, takes a deflection. Schnapp able to knock it down at the blue line. It comes back out. 43 seconds to go here in Winston-Salem. Carolina trying to get its sixth straight win. Near side, Graham leaves it. Here's Decumbus. Throws one into the slide, shot, they score! David Gaeta with the extra man. Able to find it in the slot and with 29 seconds remaining here in the third, Port Huron has tied us up at two.
the extra man pays off. They're able to get it in deep. And just like that, with 29 seconds left to go, we're tied at two. Does someone have a late winner here before overtime? Firth plays it out on the near side. It's taken by Decumbus, but they're offside as it came back out into the neutral zone. And Port here on a hadn't get, gotten back onside. Gaeta with his second goal of the season. Coming at the 1931 mark of period number three. Face off is won. Pastuka loses an edge. 20 seconds to go. Finds Dumas. Dumas whacks it in far side. Leaves it behind. He gets taken down. Tie up. It's back out to the neutral zone. Thunderbirds have to get back on side here with 10 seconds to go. And a stoppage. We'll bring a face off back out to the neutral zone. So 7.7 .7 seconds remain here in the third. We're tied at two. Face off in front of Port Huron's bench. This game has been a battle all night. Face off. It's one into the attacking zone, but it's cleared back out. Felder will play it at the blue line with two seconds and one. And for the second Saturday in a row here in Winston-Salem, the Carolina Thunderbirds will go to overtime, this time against the Port Huron Prowlers. So neither side will get three points here this weekend or here at tonight. And we are headed to overtime. Carolina and Port Huron. Next goal will win it. Telstrom at 851 of the second. Ends up making it one to nothing. Tucker Firth and Yuri Pastuka, two unanswered. Makes it two to one. And then David Gaeta with assists from Vincent Decumbus and Matt Graham. End us tying and tying us up at two. Carolina last Saturday only needed 41 seconds to win it. It was Gus Ford who was able to take it. Thunderbirds in overtime or a shootout are three and oh this year. A couple Fridays ago in Binghamton, Carolina 5-4 shootout victory. They won that shootout one to nothing. Against Binghamton, handed them an overtime loss. And then last Saturday, rather before that, it was another shootout victory for Carolina. In Columbus, last Friday, 2-1 to one after Carolina tied it up with just 53 seconds remaining. And then last Saturday, Carolina coming from behind again to take a 3-2 victory in overtime against the Columbus River Dragons. But now three-on-three three action for the next five minutes. Face off, and we're underway here in overtime. Thunderbirds will get the first look. Gus Ford. Had the winner last week into the attacking zone. Surveys, sends it in. Salak near half boards, walks out to the dot. Puck on his stick, bouncing around. Salak holds. Brings it in, sends it back into the high slot. Ford, a shot and a glove save by Tynan. He covers just 30 seconds here in overtime. Remember, these two sides play one more time tomorrow. It'll be a 4.05 puck drop here from Winston-Salem for game three between Port Huron and Carolina. Who will be the hero tonight for the Thunderbirds? Manachik in for the draw. It's one. Jay gets a stick to it. Firth able to keep it in at the blue line, though. Here's Pastuka. Already two goals this weekend. He holds at the half boards. Sends it back out. Manachik circles back. He didn't like what he saw, and he'll reset. Quick change here as Graham comes out for Merritt. 50 seconds gone here in overtime. Pastuka, one on three right now. On the far side, he holds. He'll send it in off the boards. Firth, the first one to it. Going up against Graham in the corner. Puck still free here in three on three action. Pastuka trying to throw it in front, takes a deflection. Manachik trying to have a dance around, goes off the skate of Firth, and Matt Graham able to control. He brings it out. With 3.45 remaining in overtime. Graham, across the blue line. He holds and he'll reset. Still got Pastuka and Firth out there. They're trying to get out. Now quick change here. Dangerous change though as now. Here's Gaeta. Sent us to overtime with just 31 seconds left. Leaves it for Picard. Walks in the slot. A shot saved by Cavalieri. He got the left blocker. The left block there. Here comes Schnapp. Schnapp. 
Trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Makes the man fall down. Walks in on the back end inside and makes the save. And he freezes. Oh, Jacob Schnapp already has a point tonight. Trying to end it right there. But instead, Tynan's able to cover with 315 remaining in overtime. Gus Ford in for the draw with Salak and Clay Keeley. To the left of Tynan. It's one back to Keeley. He'll back in this one in deep as the stick goes flying from Schumacher. Taking it away. Salak holds, leaves it for Clay Keeley. Keeley walks in behind the net. Surveying, he'll bring it back out. He'll bring it back out to the neutral zone. Two minutes in it to overtime. Tied at two. David Gaeta sending us to overtime. In the final minute, here's Salak. He holds, Salak spins away. Back out to Keeley, Keeley dancing up the far side to Ford, Ford. Brings it out, near side, a back in attempt. It got blocked in front, comes back to Salak though. At the top of the zone, leaves it for Ford at the blue line. Ford, holding, holding. Dances around his defender, walks in, back in, and that one ends up being saved by Tynan. And he keeps us going here at 2.15, left to go. Here in the third, Port Huron in the middle of a change. This one goes all the way down. No icing as both sides go off for a change. This one taken away, it's thrown back out into the high slot, it's turnover, Pastuka comes away with it, here comes Carolina, Pastuka walks in, loses it, gets it back to the top of the zone, and he'll bring it back out here with 155 remaining in overtime. Pastuka, near side, a quick shot save, pucks to loose though, it's played behind the net, Tynan wasn't able to control it, Pastuka leads it for Panacic, walks in against Jay, brings it behind the net, Throws it out in front, gets knocked down, comes back out. Pastuka will now have to retreat. The Cumbus, poke check. Here's Panacic, near side. In the attacking zone, holding. He'll settle things down as Pastuka went off. Dawson Baker out with a minute 23 remaining in overtime. Tied at two in the second of three this weekend. Baker with a minute 15. Plays it for Schnapp. Schnapp, he's in! He scores! Carolina in overtime. Their final from the annex. Carolina three. Port here on two. He had a great attempt earlier on in the overtime. Titan made the save on the first try. But this time, Jacob Schnapp, the hero, here in Winston-Salem. Carolina gets their sixth straight win and pick up another two points here tonight. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. Thunderbirds post game is next. This is Thunderbirds hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. 
Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Welcome back to Winston Salem, Carolina, victorious in overtime over the Port Huron Prowlers, thanks to Jacob Schnapp's winner with 111 remaining in the overtime. His third goal of the year, the decider, after he had a chance earlier on in overtime. He's able to finish it off here this evening. Carolina, three, two winners. Here for the second Friday in a row as they announce the three stars of the evening. Yuri Pasuka named the third star here tonight. And the second star is the netminder, Mario Cavalieri. 30 saves on 32 shots tonight for Mario Cavalieri. And then take a guess as who's going to be the first star of the night. as Carolina wins it in overtime. That was a wild one here this evening. Carolina is now 4-0 and oh in overtime or shootouts this year. They've won six in a row and now won five in a row against the Port Huron Prowlers. How we got there this evening? We start with the second period as Jacob Schnapp. Is named the first star here this evening. But it started as Port Huron took the lead early on in this one, rather in the second period. With 8.51 more, Matthias Selstrom was able to give Port Huron a one to nothing lead. But then less than 50 seconds later, Tucker Firth tied us up at one. And at the 16.51 mark, it was Yuri Pesuka with the, with the goal that gave Carolina a two to one lead. That was where we were until 29 seconds remain in the third period. And it was David Gaeta able to beat Mario Cavalieri. He sent us to overtime. And then in the overtime, Jacob Schnapp earlier on, he had a pretty good opportunity, a pretty good chance to end it. Tucker Tynan made a big save, but then he was able to get a second opportunity and he was able to beat Tynan the second time at the 349 mark of overtime. And Carolina victorious by a score of three to two. And now they have taken the series and try to go to the sweep tomorrow. We're back to wrap up Thunderbirds post game after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. My name.
Back here on Thunderbirds postgame, getting ready to close out another overtime victory for the Carolina Thunderbirds here on a Saturday night in Winston-Salem. Last weekend, it was Gus Ford that won it just 41 seconds in overtime. This time, it's Jacob Schnapp with his third goal of the year, being able to beat Tucker Tynan, and he sends the Thunderbirds home victorious. So Carolina picks up another two points here this evening. They now move into a tie at the moment with Columbus in points, both sitting at 26. Right now, Columbus in Blue Ridge. Right now, tie Tied at three, but just over three minutes gone in the third period up at the Apex Center. At Carolina tonight, they now improve to 4-0 in the shootout or overtime. They've won six in a row, and they've won five straight against Port Huron. And now try to sweep the series coming up tomorrow at 4.05 p.m. 4.05 p.m. Puck Trump with coverage starting at 3.35 here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Now as Carolina tries to go for the sweep tomorrow. Don't forget, though, that coming up on Tuesday, it's another edition of the Coach Harry Show, live from Earl's in Winston-Salem. Well, that'll just about do it for us here on a Saturday night at the Annex, Carolina. A thrilling 3-2 victory thanks to Jacob Schnapp's game winner at the 349 mark in overtime. For Dylan Klein, Jack O'Connell, Logan Allen, Caleb Blazier, and back in our WTO studios, Rick O'Neill, the radio guy. I'm Brendan Riley saying so long for Winston-Salem. Carolina victorious by a score of 3-2 to two in overtime. Coming back tomorrow for the series finale starting at 335. This has been Thunderbirds Hockey.